Ready? Gentlemen. Good to go. Ready? Buy some air. You ready? All right. Good evening. The regular meeting of the city commission. There we go. Now we got it. The regular meeting of the city commission for Tuesday, March 26th will come to order. Please silence all your cell phones. I got no audio here. How about that? All right. They'll work on it. Keep going up, they're saying. All right. I will eat the mic as much as I can. Is that better? Can you hear me now? on in the lobby but not up here all right so we'll get through the first few minutes i'll try to speak as loudly as i can we've got all the best and brightest working on the sound i presume okay now we're getting something now it sounds like i'm in a in a canyon somewhere all right just more out there test your mic real quick jake yes one two one two one still two, just out one, there two. okay hello everyone We'll give them another minute to work through that. Um, while we while we wait on that, we'll go ahead and proceed with the roll call, City Clerk. Mayor Owen. Here. Vice Mayor Hartman. Here. Commissioner Colodi. Here. Commissioner Sachs. Here. Commissioner McGurk. Here. Thank you. Okay. We'll proceed with the invocation and the pledge so at this time we'll have police department chaplain laura berg will give the invocation please stand and remain standing for the pledge after the invocation let us pray oh holy one we pause for a moment as we gather tonight to share words of gratitude for the gift of this incredible day and the joy of being a part of it we're thankful for the winds we've had that have blown those oak squigglies away that have caused pollen to make some of us sick. <laughs> and we can enjoy the laughter for all of the blessings, oh God. We are very grateful, those we've received individually and collectively, for the opportunity to share our blessings with others and for the freedom that we are given to gather together tonight and to discuss the needs of our community. Bless the efforts of our dedicated mayor, our city officials, and our city commissioners tonight, who assume the responsibility to lead and direct the affairs and business of our beautiful city. Bless also all who have gathered here tonight because they of the care and concern for our city and for all who dwell and visit here. Enable us to work together in harmony and with respect for one another especially amid the conflicting interests and issues. May your peace and your joy be realized in our lives, our homes, our businesses, and our schools, and the community at large. All of these things we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, testing, testing. Still, how are we doing out there? Can we hear it in the lobby? I mean, in the in the chamber now or no? Still not. Still not in the chamber. We have it out there though. All right, that speaker was working, so. We'll keep pressing forward on some of these things. Hey, there we go. Think a little better, maybe? All right, still in the lobby, all right. City, assistant city manager, any changes to the agenda? Okay. This time we have a recognition of some completions, which the vice mayor is gonna present to Commissioner Clody and I. <coughs> So on behalf of the John Scott Daly Florida Institute of Government and the Florida League of Cities, I'm pleased to award this certificate to you for completion of the 18 hours 
of Instruction at the Institute of Elected Municipal Officials in Jacksonville, Florida, January 25th through the 27th. We strongly believe that your attendance in the, at the Institute indicates is indicative of your continued commitment to improving the quality of municipal government in Florida. If we may be of assistance in the future, please don't hesitate to contact us. So Mayor Owen, his certificate of completion and Commissioner McCullough, your certificate. Okay, we'll press forward. Hopefully the sound will get better. We're gonna start with public participation. Item number five on the agenda. This is uh, your chance to speak. There will be a three limit, three minute time limit. I ask you to be respectful of that. Um, this is your opportunity to address the commission on any topic desired. Uh, specifically, though, this is the last chance and only chance to address us on items on the consent administrative, this consent agenda, administrative items, or new business ordinances, first reading, and items eight through resolution eleven. So, um, on the items that are second reading of public hearing, you can speak specifically at that time. Otherwise, now is your chance to speak on any of those items. If you'd like to speak, come on forward. State your name and address for the record. My name is Timothy Washington. I live on the historic west side, 318 North Myrtle Avenue. Um, I was born and raised in this city. Went to the old high school. I'm a military veteran. And I received a letter in the mail saying that they wanted to turn a lot on my block into a parking lot. Uh, I have talked with some of the people in my neighborhood and we don't want that it changes the uh, health and the safety of the whole neighborhood um, the changes in use of the property will negatively affect the neighborhood's property value and changes pose a threat to the health and safety of the neighborhood the change is not in is not uh, desired by the majority of the neighborhood um, the variance will cause unwanted noise Odors, lights, and intrusion increase traffic. Traffic increase along our uh, uh, neighborhood. Housing and roadways make it less desirable. The potential to increase in crime with the more traffic. Also, there's the parking lot have the negative effect on the environment. So you have the need for more parking suggests an increase in traffic congestion which increases gas emissions damage air quality also you have the cars that are going to be parked there and they're going to be leaking fluids it's inevitable and there's going to be drain water and where does that go so there's a vi environmental hazard also along with that so please do not do not turn our neighborhood into something it's not. It's a residential neighborhood. It's classified R3, and it's one of the only in the city of New Smyrna Beach. It's a historic neighborhood. We don't need a parking lot. It doesn't fit the aesthetics of the neighborhood. Please do not do this. Now, I don't know if I have to go further and talk to the board, uh, zoning board, but I'm letting it be known that I and I speak for several people. Um, they're not here tonight, but I am uh, have a, a number with me. It's not wanted. And I go out in my backyard. I'll look. I'll be looking right at it. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you wouldn't want a parking lot in your backyard. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. My name is Mary Lou Klein. I live at 704 Magnolia Street. And while I've wit 
witnessed many accidents at the corner of Magnolia and Smith, where there is no four-way stop sign. On July 17, 2005, my husband was hit and killed right in front of my house. He was hit by an unlicensed, uninsured driver and died two months later in Halifax Hospital. Um, we have observed huge violations of the speed limit in that area. I have a daughter who is totally deaf and she travels across the street to our neighbor who helps with my children frequently. Should someone not see her or her not hear or see a car traveling at really high speeds, she could be injured, killed, but um, yeah, he died on October 6, 2005, as a result. Now, I've heard someone say there have been no deaths as a result of the high speed on Magnolia. That is not true. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. I'm Grace Higgins, 351 and 355 North Myrtle Ave, the historic section. Um, what that guy said before everything is true, you have families there that have been there for generation after generation, single family homes. There's a blind man that lives three doors down from this proposed parking lot. There are little kids that live right across the street. There's a two-year-old girl that lives right next door to it. And what I see when I look out on my porch is little school children walking home from school right past that area. And the reason kids can walk home from school in this day and age is because everybody at neighborhood knows everybody. And uh, not only would it be an eyesore, but there are beautiful old trees on that lot that have to be at least 200 years old. And it would be a crime to tear those down. And build a parking lot for what purpose? There's plenty of parking all around Pettis Park. I've been to the festival over there. I never had a problem trying to find a place to park. Um, yeah, the neighborhood is 100% single family homes. The inhabitants have been pretty much forced to live there for generation after generation, and they're happy there. You know, the neighborhood is beautiful. Everybody upkeeps their house. I'm proud to say I live there. It's like the best secret in New Smyrna Beach where you can find affordable housing, and I would hate to see that change. And I never received a notice in spite of owning two houses right across the street from there. And a lot of my neighbors aren't here because they don't know anything about it. What, what is the proposed use for that parking? What are they gonna park there for? To access what? We all have parking. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, Mr. Hill. <clears throat> My name is Jimmy Hill. I live at 453 Oak Street. I work at 314 North Dust Street, across from the property in question here. I want to reply to some of that statements I just heard and answer some of the questions that were asked. We are in the old, the original uh, Sacred Heart Church building and the old Colored Mission Church building. And uh, we have a festival, an annual festival every year. Next door to us at 316 North Dust, uh, 312 North Dust, is the Sea Carter Learning Center. One of the 
business uh, children care centers in town. In addition to our annual festival every year, there are many changes and upgrades in Pettis Park. Pettis Park has changed. It is not the old weed infested, insects infested field that it was for too many years. It has been upgraded and now in addition to the pavilion that is available for family activities, there's an athletic field for softball, volleyball, football, whatever, what have you. There's a handball court, there are tennis courts, there are pickleball court, there's a skateboard rink, and Pettis Park has changed, and somewhere along the, around, along the line, that area of New Smyrna Beach also need to change. All those people come there for recreation and other activities need a place to park. Or the people who visit the museum park along the ditch benches Mr. on Jefferson Street. Mr. L, your, your, your time is up, but out of great deference to your many years of service in the community, if you'd like to have another 30 seconds or so to wrap up, I'm happy to grant you that. Thank you, sir. I'll, 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 I will wrap up right now. I just feel like change is going to come. It needs to come, and we some things we good things we we can't hold on to. Uh, we are we are doing whatever we can to make the place safe for children, particularly all those kids that see a uh, call a learning center. I want you to reconsider, I want you to consider that we need a parking area for all those people who frequent Pettis Park. It's not the old Pettis Park anymore. Thank you. Thank you. And when you've been in town as long as he has and done as much, I'm, we'll give you more time as well. <laughs> Yes, sir. I'll take a lot less time. Uh, <laughs> my name is James Berry. I live at 1711 Magnolia Street, which is the corner of Magnolia and 10th. And I want to offer the commission a great deal of thanks for getting the rumble strips removed from in front of our home. It is now much more quiet there. That nuisance is gone, and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks to city staff for taking care of that. Good evening. My name is Kevin Ragsdale. I live at 1616 Magnolia Street, and uh, I am here representing uh, Magnolia Street or, uh, residents. Uh, Magnolia Street requests that the commissioners and the mayor consider placing more than one type of speed calming device along Magnolia Street. Ten speed cushions, seven traffic tables, and three roundabouts. We do, not, we do support traffic tables and speed cushions placed 300 to 600 feet, as stated in the draft traffic manual dated February 11, 2019. We also support traffic rubber curbs roundabouts located at 2nd Street, 7th Street, and 9th Street. The draft was put on or out by the city manager dated February 11, 2019. It states on page 26 under two speed hump. The device usually slows the traffic immediately and if placed three to 600 foot apart, will tend to reduce the speed between speed table placement. Speed humps or cushions also tend to reduce the volume and cut through traffic, considerably due to the driver's discomfort when navigating a speed hump. It also states in the draft that the cost for these are between 2,500 and 3,000. We have a traffic calming ballot <clears throat> 
as suggested in the draft of the traffic calming manual with 88 signatures of Magnolia Street residents requesting and suggesting that the commission and the mayor move forward and consider the following. First, 10 speed cushions to be placed every 600 feet as suggested in the draft. From Andrews Street to just south of 10th Street before the bridge, it's 6,390 feet. 10 speed cushions are $2,500 each for the total of 25 grand. A slow cushion, excuse me, a speed cushion is better suited for Magnolia Street because it allows emergency vehicles access due to their large wheelbase. <clears throat> and it comes in three sections to adjust the width for proper placement for storm, or excuse me, storm drainage. Second that we request is speed tables are also used as a crosswalk for pedestrians. Seven speed tables in the total, in total at two intersections. Three placed at the intersection of 6th Street and Magnolia, one to be placed facing north, one to be placing south, and the other one to be placing or facing east due to the intersection not having a sidewalk. And four placed at the intersection of 3rd Street. All of these can be used as pedestrian crosswalk. They can be marked as we needed. Total cost for that would be 26,000. Third, traffic circles. Roundabouts made out of super flex rubber curves and can be configured to any size to be placed at the intersection of 2nd, 7th, and 9th. The total for those are 5,700. Total would be 61,800. But after speaking to Traffic Logic, they said that they could do everything for around 50 grand. Okay, and also when we consider this, we also think about our, the other streets, Riverside and Live Oak, that would be awesome too. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thanks. Lots of speakers. Randy Herman, good evening, Mayor and City Commission. I have two items. The first is um, information from uh, the last night Neighborhoods Council. I want to thank Philip, Philip Vesky for getting an excellent speaker from uh, the Stuart Marchman program. Um, as you all may or may not know, the Stuart Marchman closed our mental health outpatient clinic uh, in November. Uh, which was on North Orange Street. And for people seeking outpatient treatment for mental health issues and chemical dependency issues, they now have to go to Daytona or DeLand. Um, they are very aware of this as a shortfall for our community and explained the reason they had to close the clinic was a budgetary cut that they had received. Um, I think the discussion was an important one uh, in that uh, around 70% of their clients that were current that were being seen at that clinic are now being seen in Daytona, but 30% are not for a variety of reasons, one of being, being transportation and ability to get to Daytona or DeLand. <clears throat> uh, Fannie Hudson, who's on the Neighborhood Council, is working on Wednesdays with some of that 30% trying to help them uh, come up with solutions and um, uh, strategies for meeting their, their current mental health challenges. Um, it's a big thing, but I just think it's important that as a, as a city, we continue to look at how <coughs> mental health services are accessed. Um, it, one of the things that uh, they're doing is doing uh, special training. Our police force had uh, eight hours training uh, just recently, and I think it was very well received uh, because I think there are a lot of mental health issues that people are definitely aware of, particularly right now with teen suicide, which is a huge issue. Um, uh, Stuart Marchman does have a crisis line um, that can be used, but we don't have a uh, place here in our town. And But I think it's important to note that they are concerned about that, and they are going to be working with us to see what they can do, perhaps to get some private practitioners in our community to, to be able to uh, provide services for people that don't have insurance or access to transport to um, Daytona or uh, DeLand. But I just I thought it was a very important sharing of information and important issue for our, our community. And the second is, is I'm not sure how much uh, will be discussed tonight on the whole AOB site, but it's coming up under administration. Um, i just like to support the uh, feeling, which I think represents a lot of people, of, of keeping the ownership of the AOB site. And um, I'm not sure what it means to reject or go for the fine grant at this point, but I think it would be important to discuss the pros and cons of that um, as to does it in any way cut across our ability to best use that piece of land. 
Um, and last, it seems like um, it would be good if we're taking a good hard look is to really look at our city marina, which I think is a profit center. Um, the Anglers Club, which I've never understood its existence, but it's right there. Then a private um, uh, entrepreneur who's also quite successful and the AOB site. It seems like that whole group could be part of the discussion about really coming up with a long-term exciting plan for that use. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Marty Danaher, 115 Lagoon Court, New Smyrna Beach. And tonight I'm speaking as a director of the New Smyrna Beach Citizens for Smart Growth, LLC. I'm also speaking in opposition to the city pursuing another find matching grant regarding the AOB site item 7C. The AOB site issue is part of the priorities plan, which to date has not been approved by you. Clearly, the importance of this issue requires sufficient data, sufficient input, and an in-depth analysis of options prior to moving forward and committing dollars. Also, as Mr. Herman just pointed out, please be aware of the degree and momentum of citizen support to keeping the property city-owned in perpetuity for the recreational use of our citizens, residents, and guests. A disturbing specific in the staff report indicates using a large percentage of the property for doubling the current truck boat trailer parking area. Sufficient rationale was not provided. Recall that the Swope facility was provided to mitigate congestion, traffic, and other weekend issues at the current launch area. The Swope site can be expanded. We need data to understand who uses both of our facilities. Our organization fully supports, fully supports providing boating facilities for New Smyrna Beach, Volusia, and other fine county boating citizens. The fine agreements require that we treat all fine county residents equally per the fine website, Orlando, Orange and Seminole counties and other inland counties are not fine participants and do not financially contribute to find. Therefore, we do not have any responsibility to provide facilities for them. Finally, we and other citizen groups encourage you to halt current activity, protect this land in perpetuity, and set a course, a direction for the city regarding this valuable asset. I leave you a copy of the 2015 City Commission endorsed Coronado Island Vision Statement de developed by the citizens and staff. Please consider it in all that you do in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Good timing. I was <laughs> Oops, sorry, she first? Well, I just, yeah, with the kid. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Bobby Hollers, 512 Magnolia Street. Um, I'm here in support of all of my neighbors and in support of everything that Kevin Ragsdale just presented to you. I was one of the people that walked up and down the street um, getting signatures for our ballot. Um, just real quick, a lot of those people signed and they expect us to speak for them, but Magnolia residents in support of this ballot, ballot that are here, if you could stand, that would be great. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of us. Thank you. And um, yes, thank you very much. And as you heard earlier, we don't want another fatality on our street. There is not a single person in this room that wants another person hurt, that wants another cat or dog killed that wants another vehicle destroyed. I see it in front of my house all the time. We all want the same thing, and that is safety and the protection of our property. I know that's what you want, too. The proposed things by the city are not adequate. What we have proposed in our ballot are what is recommended. Our street requires 
what is recommended. If we don't put in the recommended amount of, of <laughs> traffic calming items, it's going to be a failure. And then when it's a failure, then we're going to say, oh, well, that didn't work. Now, what are we going to do? It's just not, you know, what are we going to do now? Now we're going to spend a whole lot more money. Now we're going to go do these build outs and we're going to do all these permanent structures that are going to cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars. Let's take the easy route. Let's spend less money on these things that are already outlined by the city in our proposal or in your proposal, rather. Let's use those. Let's get them all put in and let's see what happens. And if there's more than we need, then we can put them somewhere else. And if they f we find that they really work, then let's use them in the rest of the neighborhood. If the traffic flows around, then let's put them on Palmetto. Let's put them on Live Oak. We don't want to keep anyone from Canal Street. We don't want to keep anyone from our neighborhood. We want to slow them down. And if they're just cutting through and they don't care about our neighborhood and they don't care about our safety, then they can stay on US-1. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, come on up. <laughs> you don't want to go first? You want to go first? Okay, go ahead. Pull that mic down so we can hear uh, it. I can't see. There you go. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Ethan Rudd. I live on Magnolia Street. I'm here to tell you that everyone speeds on my street. Every time I walked home from school, I see a car, but the car is always speeding. So we need it to stop now. And it's sad that cars speed. So help me make speeding stop. Thank you. Good job, buddy. Okay. You're good. You're okay. I'm right here. Start here and go slow. Go ahead. It's all right. You got this. Come on. Look. You don't even have to look over here. It's right here. Hey, how are you today? Did you come to talk about Magnolia? What do you want to tell us? What's your name? Yeah, that's an easy one. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to read with me and I'll read with you? Okay, you ready? Okay. Hello. My name is Taya Rudd. I live on Magnolia Street and I'm here to tell you about living on my street. My street is very dangerous because I see too many speeding cars and I can not play in my front yard without having to back up again and again. And I don't feel safe walking home with the amount of speeding cars going on our street and I really am worried about our animals and their safety. I really want to I really want to play with my friends and be a kid. I don't like feeling unsafe. And that's why I hope we can change the street. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. All right. Hello, my name is Savannah Rudd, and I want to tell you about living on Magnolia 10th Street. Slow down. And why I think we should change the road. The first reason I think we should change the road is because we can't walk across our street safely because of the people coming off of US-1. My second reason I think we should change the road is because it would be better and safer for us to ride our bikes and all the other kids that live near us. The third reason is we have a lot of kids from my school, Reed Patillo, when we walk home, it, or when we walk home it's not safe. We have been almost hit countless times from people coming off of US-1 and speeding. We can't have a lot of people, we can't have a lot of family gatherings because the little kids can't go by the road and we are scared that they might wander off and get hurt. Please think of us kids, we are citizens too. Thank you for listening. Thank you all. 
Uh, I'm Sarah, obviously the mother of these three. Um, I am a Magnolia resident. I live in between 9th and 10th Street on Magnolia. Um, I have a very awkward shape lock. It's an L. Um, I'm technically 1709 Magnolia. I am unable to have a mailbox on Magnolia Street because my mailman says it's too dangerous. I do not have my garbage picked up on Magnolia Street because the trash men said that no cars stop for them. My actual mailbox and trash can is off at 10th Street. Um, we actually parked only two times since owning our home for six years on Magnolia Street because the second time that we parked on Magnolia Street, my front end of my truck was a hit and run and my tie rod is completely broken. Um, the times that the children do get to walk to and from school require me to walk them halfway and then walk home because once they reach Live Oak, it is a pretty safe street. We did just get sidewalks put in, which are lovely, but the kids can't use them. Um, two months ago, we got a puppy for Christmas. Two months ago, the children were walking her down the street and a car came up off of Magnol or off of the road and actually went onto the sidewalk because of at 9th Street where the stop sign is, no one stops at it. So when a car actually was stopped there, they didn't know what to do and had to swerve around them and had to go up on the sidewalk. This is not the first time it's happened. Um, actually, about two years into living on Magnolia, we, thank you, we, <laughs> ah, thanks kid, um, <laughs> we, uh, we actually had to pull my son out from our front yard and stop him from being hit from an actual Edgewater police officer who was attempting to chase a car down and the car veered through our yard. Um, we do actually have moved our fence line from the property line of our house 15 yards back to 35 feet back in hopes that this would in some way stop it. Um, we have a large stump in front of our house because so many cars have hit the tree that we had to cut down the large oak tree. <laughs> now we just have a stump. Um, I would really just like to see something change to slow it down. I don't want it closed off. I understand that everyone thinks that the Magnolia residents are being entitled to something, but the only thing we're entitled to is the safety of our children and the safety of ourselves. Um, like the woman that spoke first that had her husband get hit, that little girl terrifies me. Absolutely, I mean, I could cry right now thinking about it. I have watched her be almost hit so many times trying to walk across the street. Do nothing but walk across the street. I watched her chase a ball out in the middle of the road and I watched a motorcycle almost absolutely run her over and then scream at her like it's her fault that he's doing 50 down our road. I really, really think that the roundabouts are the best option. I really, really like the fact that we're unable to move them if they don't. If they don't work, we can pull out and try something else. Um, before I run out of time, I would like to say though that about two weeks ago, we went to Pettis Park in New Smyrna um, and they were having an Alcohol Anonymous, um, I guess a picnic. When we showed up, we were unaware of this. The kids were just going there to play. Um, and we found parking right away. I'm not really sure where we're running into problems with parking in that area. Um, there had to be a good 100 to 150 people there. Um, we found about third, the parking spot about third way in and the six other cars that were with us, the other parents, all found parking as well. Um, maybe I do see across the street that there is a no parking sign. Maybe removing that no parking sign to the empty lot and just allow people to park across that road could expand the next 20 parking spaces that would allow it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job, y'all. Thanks for coming tonight. <clears throat> That's when you leave. You have to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Robert Reese, 391 Granada Street, New Smyrna Beach. Uh, it's been a while since I've been here. I attended about 19 years of these meetings before I retreated pulled away for a while. All right, uh, public participation. First thing I want to talk off with, uh, people in the history of me, they know I'm a tax abbot. I'm a tax watchdog in New Smyrna Beach. I don't like taxes. This half cent sales tax coming on, the county's trying to push and convince the cities is a bunch of junk. We have the highest gasoline tax, county tax, in the state of Florida. <coughs> we don't need another half cent tax for gas. 
if we need our roads repaired, we need to spend the tax revenue we're getting already from the county level, the state level, and the federal level. We don't need to take those precious funds and keep spending them on beautification of the highways, bike trails to nowhere sometimes. We need to take care of the roads. One thing about adding another a half cent tax, you'll never remove it again. And then later on, it's going to come up, we need a half cent for something else. Taxes are never reduced or removed. So be careful when you have to and place them. That's one thing this country was discovered for. The freedom of religion and taxation from England. <coughs> and people will leave if the taxes get too high. Uh, parking. It's sad what's happening in front of Merck's Grill in the bowling alley with that sidewalk diagonal parking. I spoke with the assistant manager today, this evening before, and there was no sense in that sidewalk being put there in the first place since we have one right on the highway side. And I asked him, uh, how about blocking the sidewalk off? Well, we just can't do that. We'd have to tear it out. No, block it off, put gravel on both sides of the sidewalk, sign it, diagonal parking. We are not taking sidewalks away from the people. But you do need additional parking in this city. And diagonal parking gets twice the amount of spaces. And then you could have it diagonal facing east. All right, uh, consent of agenda. The uh, $54,000 on uh, C. I assume that's coming from a block grant. I hope so, because block grants are for, it, and it seems like uh, the West Side's Babe James Center and everything else gets all the block grant money anyway. So I hope that comes out of the block grant. Thank you, Mr. Reese. <laughs> okay. That's your time. May I have That's another it. 15 seconds, Mr. Mayor? We're already, we're already 30 seconds over. I gave you, I gave you the 15 seconds. T 10 more seconds. Thank Quick, you, Mr. Quickly, Mayor. Quickly. Uh, approval purchase of the uh, fire boat. Is that as a result of the mooring field phase two? Is that a requirement? Duly noted. Thank you. Thank you. And the other two I can take care of the second hearing. Thank you for right. the extra time. Thank you. Good evening, city, our city mayor and councilman. We thank you for being here. I was going to have a few things. It's I'm I, sorry, LD Bomber, nine fifteen Magnolia Street uh, on the property. I was going to have a few recommendations, but I like what Kevin has said. I'm not up to speed on that. Sorry, I didn't sign it, but I certainly agree with it. My my biggest complaint was going to be at Seventh Street where nobody stops; they roll through it. From there all the way down to, I believe it's Andrews, is nothing but a drag strip. So we've heard the stories. I don't need to keep doing it or keep saying it. We're, we're asking for it. I was just going to make a couple recommendations. I would love to see the speed limit reduced in all of our historical areas to 20 mile an hour. It, it just doesn't make sense with the bicycles if you sit on my porch. It's just nonstop pedestrians, bicycles, people with pets, even these little uh, golf carts that are being used, they're DOT uh, compliant, so they use them. They don't go over, you know, 25, 30 mile an hour. Uh, I could tell the horror stories, and I was here a couple weeks ago and, and told of what's been happening to me. So I just ask that we, if you can, consider all of New Smyrna and the charm of New Smyrna to slow the traffic down. I play golf at New Smyrna uh, Golf Club. I meet a lot of people. They just love our historical areas. All of them say, if your house is for sale, I'd love to buy it. I mean, everybody would love to come in our area. So it, it's, it's a neighborhood. I also ask that maybe we limit truck traffic 
I counted the number of trucks. I said on my porch, way more big trucks. I know some of them are commercial, and I know some of them have to come on the street. And then there are these huge big pickup trucks with lawn mowing equipment and all that. I even looked to see if they stop in the neighborhood. They don't. They're, it's passed through traffic. Uh, and, and I ask that you enforce what's being done. I know our police force is busy. They got a lot to do. I go down Riverside some on the going north, and there's a patrolman because he lives there taking speed limits. I haven't seen a patrolman on our street forever. And, you know, I, I can testify that it's way above 50 mile an hour what some people do. And they just don't seem to care. Uh, You've heard the horror story, so I just wanted to make those points. One other pet peeve I have, and I'm over, and I'm sorry about that. Again, thank you for consideration, but I don't know if it's the city council, but someone, when I put out my recyclable trash, has been picking up my cans for years and years. Now, I don't know if it's revenue to the city or the utility company. I don't know if I address it here. All I'm saying is somebody comes by at night because I've stayed up to watch, collecting all the cans through our neighborhood so they can profit from it. Is there any comment that can be made here, or should I take it up with the utilities? Yeah, the, I can assure you it's not the city council, first of all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, no, it, it's, I, I want to bring it here because no, it may I, be I, I know what you meant. I know what you meant. Um, no, we'll, we'll we'll talk to staff about that. It's probably someone that's coming through. I mean, there's there's people that do that. They drive around and and, and pick those up. So a lot for yeah. a long time. We'll, we'll look into it. Thank you. Thank you, council. Celeste Lester, four ten Koya CC, New Smyrna Beach. I'm gonna be really fast. And all these people here that are from Magnolia, I go down that street all the time. I always obey the speed limit because I'm always looking out for kids, dogs, animals, because I'm a humane person, okay? But I really think that we need to have our police department sit there, like at a certain time or whatever, and give speeding tickets out. I really believe that, if they are speeding. Me personally, the times I've been, I really hadn't seen anybody, but I don't live there. But the point of it is, is you need to have law enforcement on that street. Because what's going to happen is you're going to do one thing to one street, then the traffic's going to go to the next street, and the next street. If you put in all the blockage that you want to, which is okay, but I'm just telling you what's going to happen. That traffic's going to divert on other streets. So one thing's going to lead to another, so you might as well plan to do the whole city or low the speed limits to 20 miles an hour and have a policeman out there and let them rotate. Ro spend one hour on this street, one hour on that street, one hour on that street. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Miss March. Hi, Christina March, 1324 Buck Lane. I just want to thank you all for reading that really long email I sent over the weekend. Um, I'm going to try and be as unbiased as possible. Um, when you guys review the city charter this year, please um, consider your appointment of the city manager. Um, I'd like to see public input about it. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Come in. Good evening, Rose Pish, uh, 1110 Magnolia Street. Um, I've been away for 12 days, and I just wanted to thank Khalid and the commission for all of the really good things that have been done on Magnolia Street so far. This morning when I left for mentoring, I noticed that a lot of the curbs had been painted a nice bright yellow. We had a speed limit sign indicating what speed I was traveling. Um, and I just want to say that please continue with the work that has been done so far. I think it's going to be a good improvement for Magnolia Street. The other thing I wanted to make mention of, um, two weeks ago I was here and a gentleman was speaking on behalf of some changes on the west side. 
I think it's really important for all of us to be cognizant of the, a lot of these folks that have lived there for many, many years. And at times, I think we don't hold their opinion um, in the way that we ought to and ought to really listen to them about what they know is good for their neighborhoods and perhaps uh, what is not good for their neighborhoods. So I would encourage all of us to keep some really good open ears um, for all of our residents. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome back. Any others wish to speak? Sure, come on up. If you want to speak after that, there's some seats up here. Come queue up. Shave down a few seconds. Yes, Good sir. Good evening, gentlemen. Ladies. Um, my name is Joseph Oberzot. I live at 1423 Magnolia for about 16 years. Uh, I first like to applaud this public participation. Participation. I think it's a wonderful forum for, for all the community members to interface with the commission. Um, but I'm standing here right now. I'm, I'm somewhat mortified. Um, Finding out that a neighbor of ours on Magnolia in 2005 was struck and killed by a car there, um, that, that really sets me aback to hear a death occurred on our street. This alone should motivate the approval of the requests that we're making for the ballot assuring safety measures on the street. That alone is the most important thing, a death on our street. I was totally unaware of that until now. A, a, a widow had to come up here with her handicapped child we have children petitioning the commission. We have mothers petitioning the commission. I ask, what else do we need to do to get things taken care of on our street to make it a safe residential street? I've worked with the neighbors. There are over 90 people, residents, that I participately helped with Kevin and our neighbors sign this ballot, 90 residents out of the, out of the way asking for safety measures. I believe it's incumbent upon all of us to enact these and that we all should have safety on our residential street. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Joseph. Any others wish to speak to the commission? Joe. <coughs> they haven't moved Reed Patillo yet, have they? <laughs> Joe Vada, uh, resident since 1944. <laughs> Uh, current resident, 1401 Palmetto Street, right where all the Reed Patillo traffic gathers and jams up four-way stop sign every day. Uh, it's been going on for many years. I've contacted the state. I'm back to finish my rant. It's about 15 minutes, so I'm going to have to come back after tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but the state man has told me that the best way to get rid of it is the police department and the fire department. If they can claim that it's, you know, it, it's jamming up the place down there. Not only that intersection, but the shopping center's all jammed if they had to get in there for some reason. I don't know, maybe a water main break like it did in Orlando, sink a bunch of cars out there on 6th Street. But uh, the state man has told me that they can no longer do anything about it because of the their hands are tied because the legislature's taking powers away from them. But the rest of it is, is the school district has said they were going to fix it. Many times, different different reasons. I've been working on this for 30 years now because I've been there 37 years, but I've never got serious about it <laughs> till the last four years, and I'm serious. But uh, they have said they were did all kinds of studies. They said they were going to do this and that, and then they said they were going to move the traffic to the north end. You've got emails that shows what they said to uh, Mark Severance, sergeant at the time, now lieutenant. But they promised to do it to the north end. Then they said, oh, we're going to move to school. But they don't want to spend the $230,000. That's just budget dust to somebody that has a budget of over $800 million. 230000 budget dust. Uh, I mean, I can't understand it, but they keep saying they're going to move to school. They don't want to move to school. It's been there longer than three high schools. There's been three high schools in New Smyrna, and Reed Patillo is still there since 1958. Their pickup drop-off loop is the same size now as it was in 1958 when it was truly a neighborhood school. They had probably 50 students there. My wife went to school there. I counted the tra traffic about, it's been about two years now. I have a little finger counter. There was 127 cars passed through there in the morning. Now that's, it's, it's going to vary. It's going to be up and down. Rainy day, you're going to get 50 more cars, maybe 75. But 
they've continued with these excuses. They're going to do this. They had a 20-year plan where they were going to close possibly 6th Street and 4th Street, bring all their traffic in off of the highway, loop it through there. They were going to buy all the property out to Palmetto Street. All those houses were going to be eminent domain. Uh, they didn't get away with that. It got too expensive. They got one house, and that was it. It still sits there today, unused, chain link fence around it. They don't use it for parking or nothing else. But uh, I got to go. But I'll be back. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Joe. I, I, I would just mention, as you return to your seat, Vice Mayor did ask city staff at the end of last meeting to talk to the school board, talk to our local uh, public safety. So we, we, we did hear you, and we do see the emails daily. And so we're doing what we can, but we are not the school board. So, Any others? Going once, going twice. That's it. Thank you all. All right. Next up, item six, consent agenda. Bye, kids. Thanks for coming. Come anytime. No, you're good. Thank you all. All right. Item six, consent agenda. Nine items. Does anyone wish to pull any item from the consent agenda? I just have a comment on a vice mayor has a comment on a I had a, there was a couple things on the minutes that I talked to the clerk about and corrected it I did not accuse the <coughs> Salvation Army of misusing state funds so <laughs> we resolved that issue so thank you okay Mr. McGurk anything to pull okay, Commissioner Sachs anything to pull not today sir Commissioner Colota anything to pull not at all okay I don't think I had anything to pull either. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. City Clerk. Commissioner Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Okay. Consent agenda is approved. Thank you to staff who are here on that. Item seven, administrative items, new business, Magnolia Street traffic calming. Do we have a staff report? Um, you heard all the residents on Magnolia. They've been trying to do something in Magnolia for the past two and a half years. Yeah, get get into that mic there, Colin. There you go. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Um, we've looked at it and we proposed several options at different meetings uh, at the last meeting uh, i guess the commission denied the diversion of the traffic the police chief myself and sergeant claudio we went down to magnolia from andrews all the way down to uh, us1 and we kind of looked to see what is the best locations for a speed cushion when we looked at the speed cushion, it looks like it has the least amount of noise in terms of the, the type of the cushion, and also that it's easy to be installed and to be removed in case of it has any negative impact. And we looked at trying to have a stop sign on 3rd Avenue, 3rd Street. So we looked at two locations for the speed cushions. The first one is between 7th and 8th, and the second one is between 4th and 5th. So right now, based on what we've seen on site, we're proposing two locations for the speed cushion, one stop sign at 3rd, and the speed, the electronic speed signs were installed, I guess, about a week ago. Um, our suggestion is to at least move forward and do something at this point, see how this would work. In the meantime, we will monitor the traffic on Magnolia, Live Oak, Palmetto, and Riverside. And if we feel like we need additional speed cushions, then at least we, we know how to get them and we will install them as the commission give us direction to do that. Um, we wanted to improve safety, that's our goal. Uh, we've been talking to quite a few residents, 
for the past at least year and a half that we've been meeting on site, meeting with them in public meetings, and we're just looking forward to at least do something to improve safety. Uh, we're looking for commission directions. If you feel like you need additional uh, speed cushions, just tell us. I know when we met with the uh, rep from the manufacturer, we had two residents with us. Um, one resident suggested to have a speed cushion as soon as you come off from US-1 into Magnolia before you get into the stop sign. That is a possible location. This is where the uh, rumbles used to be. Um, so at this point, uh, the staff is, is just making a suggestions of where the speed cushions to be located, including the, uh, the stop sign. The stop sign, by the way, we're proposing to have the solar uh, lighted stop sign. However, if the commission wants to move forward, we could install regular stop sign until we order the other one and then we could replace them. With that, I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. Questions from the commission? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have met extensively with the residents on Magnolia, spoken briefly with residents in other parts of the South Mainland <coughs> neighborhood. It is a, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It is a lovely neighborhood. And the lives there mean so much to me as if they were my family, but I hope they're my friends. And I would do anything I could for my friends. When my friends were doing a lot of the work and research, they came up with some great ideas. And they were in line with what the manual on uniform traffic calming devices are. The tra I'm sorry, the traffic code devices are. And they recommend combinations of traffic calming devices to put a road on a road diet. Basically, that's the terminology they use in road engineering. I think combinations of some signage, as was suggested by our assistant manager, combinations of uh, rubber speed bumps that fire equipment and those vehicles won't have to be impacted by should be placed there and a few other calming devices as were recommended possibly roundabouts if they fit possibly raised crosswalks in proper places around sixth where reed patillo is but i think the residents really know what they want they've lived there for up to 44 years at least 30 plus and there are new residents there who see the same problems and the more I talk to my friends on Magnolia, the more I see how deadly a road it is. And I'm very sensitive to dangerous roads. I've seen people crushed, maimed, harmed, property damage. And again, if we improve this road, we might even improve the quality of life, the property values. Children will be able to come out and play in their front yards. We could do so many things. Uh, the, the residents recommended, according to the guidelines, three to 600 feet you can place a speed bump. I think their calculations were very good and accurate to say, I, I would say uh, conservatively every 600 feet, but we should look at all those options. And they're relatively inexpensive compared to building islands in the center of the street which for me are just kind of chicanes, uh, something you could speed around. But according to some very highly qualified, highly regarded engineers that I know, some that are retired, some that are currently working, they recommend those devices. Signage, especially enforcement, which we know our, our police department would love to enforce. We just don't have the personnel at this time. I know that the police chief had asked for a traffic unit. Someday I hope he has one, that we can just dedicate that for speed control. But at this time, I think the recommendations of both staff and the residents that live there are great ones. The, those combinations of signage and speed bumps get people's attention. 
There may be a downside. There may be some slight noise. But to keep people safe, I'd spend millions of dollars. But the, the cost here is very reasonable. So I, I don't want to labor this more. I'd yeah. like to hear from my colleagues. Thanks. All right. So I'd propose that maybe just each take a second and kind of give our general thoughts and see if we can craft a, a motion out of it to, to move forward. So next up, anybody else like to speak on this issue? Vice Mayor. My only comment is I think we should um, not do the lighted stop sign, just put a regular stop sign in. It appears from the study that most of the problems were daytime traffic issues. Um, that's quite a bit of money for a lighted stop sign like that. So we could just use a regular one. That money could be better used maybe for additional speed humps around 9th or something like that. But what I'd also like us to do is if we can do it in-house is to do um, tra some traffic studies on Live Oak, Palmetto, Riverside so that we know what the traffic pattern is now before we enact any of these things and that we can then at a later date see how that's impacted the other side streets. Um, you know, if data is a good thing. So if we have any data ahead of the game, it, we could certainly be to a benefit later, you know, when we look at some other devices or something. So that would be my only comments. Okay. Any others wish to speak on this item? Mr. Mayor. Sure, Mr. Colody, Commissioner. I've been following this issue for a long time, since before I was uh, sitting up here as a commissioner. Uh, I've designed many of these things, as I am an engineer working in that field. Uh, there are any number of solutions that can be proposed to this. I myself would di uh, differ somewhat from what the staff has suggested. However, there are good reasons for what they did, and I support what they have recommended. I think it's a good measured approach to uh, try to get some immediate action. I don't want to study this any longer. I would like to see it implemented as it is now. If there is still a problem, it can be revisited. A lot of the things we're putting in are portable. In effect, they're, they're kind of temporary. We'll see how they work. Uh, if we need to make a modification, then we should. But we got to give it a chance. We got to try to do what the professionals have said. Okay. Thank you. I know you're counting every word tonight, <laughs> finding a finding a cold. So uh, I had just a couple of questions um, for staff. First of all, I want to be clear because I. I I'm, I'm hearing a, a recommendation, but there's something on the on the agenda item that says staff will not recommend the stop signs and speed table methods, but the city commission has the authority to override the study. So just to be clear, is, is staff recommending that or not recommending that? Well, based on the traffic study that we've done, uh, traffic study did not uh, warrant a stop sign or a speed cushion. But the commission at the last meeting, yeah. they directed staff to look for options such right. as stop sign and speed cushions. So the staff took the step to look for locations, possible locations for these measures. Okay. So, so you're saying is the study on, doesn't justify it, but if you were going to do it, these are the spots exactly. you would do it and how you would approach it. Okay. Based on the, the, the professional Got it. recommendation, I mean, we cannot recommend them, but the commission yeah. has to. Got it. Next question would be the the letter that was provided, and I, I just haven't had a chance to look back at that, that traffic manual, I just don't have it with me, but the, the one we proposed, um, does it indeed say that it's recommended that the, the speed humps be placed three to 600 feet apart? And if so, how does that, how does that jive with the recommendation or, or the, the comments and the agenda item about, are they gonna be three to 600 feet apart? Or are they gonna be, if we're only doing two on all of Magnolia, they're gonna be way further they apart. They would not be 600 feet apart because uh, if you look at the first one, I think it's between 7th and 8th, and the yeah. second one is between 4th and 5th. The way we looked at it, uh, we have stop signs, and then we have the electronic speed limit signs, and then we have the speed cushion. So we kind of spread them out to try to minimize the speed throughout the stretch. So as a trial and error, we tried these measures. And yeah. then again, these speed cushions, they're easy to install. We can install them anywhere. So if we feel like we need to add some more, we could do that. But it just, I feel like we've been working on this since almost 
I would say October. Yeah. And we just want to do something. So. Don't disagree with you there. Yeah. Um, okay. So my my thoughts, and I was trying to follow. I don't know that we're quite in alignment, so we'll, we'll try to get there. But my thoughts on this, um, to, to the assistant city manager's point, this has been going on for some time. Um, I, I think we we have been doing something. I want to want to acknowledge, as, as the citizen did, that we, you know we got the rumble strips up, we're painting curbs, but uh, it's it's time to take action. Um, I. I personally don't like the idea of putting stop signs where the experts say not to put stop signs. I've, I've, I've sat in commission meetings, I've heard uh, the traffic engineers, I've heard our public safety folks tell us that can actually cause more problems than, than it solves. Uh, so I, I get real nervous about going over the experts when it comes to the, the stop signs because there can be other negative repercussions. Speed humps uh, or, or speed tables or speed, uh, what do they call these? Cushions, speed cushions. Um, you know, not so much. There's really no negative repercussions of that. They're annoyances, I guess, if you don't want to slow down. But um, there's there's not the same kind of safety concerns that are introduced by putting a stop sign where the experts say there there shouldn't be. I'm not saying I would never do it. I'm just it gives me great pause. So um, I, I would like to see us. I, I thought that the what was put together by the citizens, if the manual truly says. You know, three to six hundred feet apart is what makes the speed uh, cushions effective. Um, you know, the, the cost is relatively negligible in the grand scheme of things, especially um, you know hearing the the stories and the things we we heard today. Um, you know, I don't want to be sitting up here when we haven't done enough, and we hear a story that's not from two thousand and five, but is from two thousand and nineteen. So um, that's that's my thoughts. The one thing I'd say on the on the data. Commissioner Hartman mentioned. Um, I agree. I'm a data guy. I don't want to delay this to get data. I guess my thought would be if there's lead time, and I'm sure there would be on these items, if we could kind of rapidly collect some data while we're waiting on things to get delivered and installed. You know, I don't, I don't want to delay this six months to collect data, but if we can get just a, a capsule of data, whatever we do, I think that would be advisable, but I don't think we need a long study to, to do that. I think we can set things in motion uh, to your point, so, um, so I, I I didn't have any concerns with what was kind of laid out here, which I don't think included a stop sign as I as I read it. Um, but again, kind of reading it quickly here. So, but I like the idea of much more frequent speed cushions. Um, roundabout, I think we'd have to make sure that intersection can accommodate, or that maybe there's two intersections here. Um, make sure it can accommodate, and the cost isn't overly prohibitive. Um, not for the actual device, but the you know reconfiguration of the intersection could be prohibitive, but I don't think it would be based on what I've been told. So maybe that would take a little time to look at that. But so those are those are my thoughts, which I think is a little more aggressive than what I think I heard out of Commissioner Colodi, I think in line with kind of what Commissioner Sachs said. So Mr. Mayor, may I add, uh, there are other considerations uh, and they're, they're not widely accepted, but sometimes commissions have the prerogative to do that, and that is to lower the speed limit. I don't even know if the residents would like that. But in many parts of the city, even on Canal Street, the speed limit is 20. On my street, on 8th Avenue, the speed limit is 25. Right now, Magnolia is 30. We have the prerogative to lower it by 5. So I would like us to consider that as well. I greatly appreciate the fact that my colleagues would consider purchasing as many speed humps as we can, because I do foresee problems on Live Oak, on Riverside, Palmetto. Again, this is a community, and, and I hope to help the whole community not divert the problem to another street. Um, I, you can pick up these tables, cushions, uh, bumps yep. move them where where you need to and there's there's a whole catalog of things we can do for this road and for the whole city it could be a model to to test to uh, make make us a, a quieter more peaceful safer city so I, I would say let's do as much as we possibly can for uh, magnolia live oak riverside palmetto uh, that's just one neighborhood to start in um, and i i've seen the problems myself and i attest that it's yeah. not just hearsay. If I may just suggest for what we do tonight, um, just because it 
you know, the, I know lowering speed limit came out tonight, but I, I have a, something I haven't really talked to any staff or experts or considered or talked to residents about or anything. I can assure you if we do enough speed tables, the, 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 the speed limit will be lowered. Uh, if we don't, you can lower the speed limit all you want. The problem aren't the people that are obeying the speed limit. The problem are the people that aren't. So lowering it, I don't think, solves that problem. But I, I would propose that we keep that separate maybe for future consideration just to keep the item focused on what we have before us tonight. So you still haven't talked on the item if you'd like to. Now's your chance. If not. I'm good, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Just trying to survive to the end of the meeting at this point. <laughs> If not, to entertain a motion on this item. So I'd like to make a motion to go forward with uh, the purchase of some speed humps, perhaps even some speed tables for the crosswalk at 6th. Uh, there's obviously a problem at 6th. Uh, Mr. Vada has shown me photographs that would blow your mind. A fire truck couldn't go down between all the parked cars there. And I know the children, we, we've heard the children at the podium attest to the fact that they're afraid to go walk to school. It's a danger, the whole neighborhood has its inherent dangers and it shouldn't, it's a nice, quiet, lovely neighborhood. So it, if we could see speed tables as well um, so for sixth. And ask maybe if you'd, if you'd consider just I'd, I'd, we, we had a couple different things under discussion. So I'd say you said some speed cushions. There was staff recommendation or what was included here was two. Uh, citizens proposal here in front of us, I think, has up to 10 speed cushions and then perhaps some speed tables for crosswalks, I believe, maybe at the intersection you mentioned. So I'd ask maybe just some specificity in that motion. Uh, that would just be for guidance for staff. Yeah, thank you. Yes. If, I, if I may just say one, one more sure. uh, on the speed table when we do it at the intersection, uh, that might be a little bit uh, without mm -hmm. looking at it carefully in terms of drainage. Putting the uh, the speed cushions along the street, I think, because we will leave an area Gaps, on yeah. the side. So I have no <coughs> issues there, but to do the raised crosswalk or speed table at the intersection, we might have an issue there. So. We just want to be careful of what we are recommending, so that's all. Could could we perhaps uh, visit uh, extra signage? Uh, that that was one thing I, I would ask the my colleagues to consider is at the beginning of the street at the south end, uh, not uh, uh, trucks over a certain tonnage, because they are there. They're going everywhere in our city where they should not be, and that's an extra added danger. Uh, so a little bit of signage. Uh, possibly local traffic only. There are all kinds of signs in the MUTCD catalog, and especially the no trucks over a certain tonnage, uh, those combinations. I agree with, uh, I think it was Commissioner, uh, Vice Mayor Hartman that said the lit, lit uh, stop sign we may not need, but. Okay. So, so I, let, me, let me help us out here. I, I yeah, would I'd like to entertain a motion that that was a specific number of speed cushions. Um, maybe we give guidance on the number or the uh, suggested placement, um, a specific number of some guidance to staff on the, uh, the pedestrian crosswalks, either to pursue them or to at least examine whether or not they are or are not feasible and advise and maybe proceed if they are feasible and advise if not. Um, and then, and then maybe we give some overarching guidance in the motion on any other signage for no through traffic, limited trucks, some of those things, uh, as maybe recommended by, by experts. So I think that would be, that's kind of what I'm looking for in a, in a motion. Okay. Make a motion that we in, put in a stop sign at third, both northbound and southbound, just the standard stop sign that we include a speed table, speed hump or calming device between fourth and fifth in between 7th and 8th. I also would like that we have an in-house study, traffic study done on Live Oak, Palmetto, and Riverside as soon as possible. And then staff could take a look at what the Magnolia folks presented to us and we can, or if I can get a second. Second. All right. That way staff will have an opportunity to look at what was presented by the Magnolia Street people tonight and they can look at it and review it and come back to us at a later date if, if there's something else in there that seems more appropriate or we can do in addition to. But for now, 
I'd like stop sign at third in Magnolia with the speed table at the two locations as staff has recommended. If I could amend that motion, just a slight hey, adjustment. Hey, hang on. Uh, I think you can, in discussion, you can ask for amendment. You, can, you can't amend it. He, he would have to amend. But okay. you can certainly discuss if you'd like to add okay. any comments to the motion maker. Just a brief comment that we purchase enough speed humps to provide adequately. Uh, that recommendation of 600 feet is is a standard. Is a I think it's a federal highway guideline standard. Uh, and if we don't need them on Magnolia, I'm sure there are some people that might like them on Live Oak because it's a very narrow road, visual constraints, people do speed there. Yeah. I've heard complaints. Okay. So and, uh, how do you feel about that? I, I'd, I'd also like to just say I'd, I'd, I'd like to see if it consider an amendment to the motion to include um, additional locations of, of speed tables. I, I, I think more than the two are called for in the traffic calming manual based on what, what I've heard from staff. So I'd like to, I, I, I could concede on the stop sign, but I think we need more more speed tables. My my comment to that is is that we're in the middle of the budget year. None of this stuff was in the budget. So it's something that we're gonna have to find, find, or find the money for. So if we do what we, what the staff has recommended tonight and get that implemented, they can review what the Magnolia Street people had presented to us. They can bring it back, whether, you know, if they need to look for additional funds, they can do so. Or if we need to budget it in next year's budget, we're in that season now for the, for our 2019, 2020 budget. So I would not be in favor of buying extra speed tables. We may need to raise crosswalks and we're at third in order for the children and everybody to get to the Live Oak Cultural Center and to the, you know, the library and such. So that may be something that staff will look at depending on the engineering issues. But for right now, I think we, we can immediately look at the two speed tables and the stop sign and do the traffic counts so that we'll have some data and see at a later date if we've impacted the other streets negatively. Okay. We have a motion and a second. I don't have a second, sir. Yes. Yes. Mr. Clody, yes. second. Yes. Mr. Clody. <coughs> okay. If no further discussion. City Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Sachs. No, I think we need to do more. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman. Yes. Commissioner Colodi. Yes. Mayor Owen. No. Okay. Lost my script. Item. Staff, did you get enough out of that? Do we need any clarity on, on that? Do we have what you so need? We're going with the, with Basically, the, what was in the agenda? Is just the two. A non lighted the, stop sign is what I heard in the motion. Okay. Just a regular stop sign and the two speed cushions. Uh, As, I, I just yep. want to make one more. Uh, there will be, we have to install some signs before the speed cushion. Yeah. So there will be additional signs. I just want to make sure because it's going to be in front of somebody's house. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Item 7B, Resolution 9-19, consider the approval of res resolution which if adopted approve the symbol of a fine grant application for the Newton City Mooring Field Phase 2. Um, Do we have a staff report? Sure. Um, Mayor, we have been working on this for quite some time. We submitted the fine application uh, for the design and permitting Phase 1. Uh, we got it. This was last year. Uh, the design is, is underway, investigation, geotechnical, uh, and, and permitting. Uh, normally what happens is you have to submit your phase two, which is the construction, at the end of March. It's a 50-50 match. Right now, uh, the cost is about $456,000. This is between 50 and 60 slips. Uh, it would be under the operation and management of the city marina. 
Uh, the city marina manager has been involved with us and the consultant in terms of the operation. They might have to add additional staff for the pump out. We will have to purchase a boat in order to, to, to manage. There will be a fee established. That fee will be submitted, uh, presented to the commission as soon as we start construction. So this way you approve the fees before we start. The fee will be compared to other uh, facilities in adjacent cities. We have visited uh, Titusville and uh, St. Augustine. They have a similar operation. Uh, if everything goes okay, if the city commission approves the submitted of the grant, this will be submitted to tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. And typically, we present to, the, to their board in June. And in October or November, they let us know if we got it or not. And then we will put it out to bid sometime in January. So we expect it, hopefully in the summer of 2020, that we'll have this under operation. And with that, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay. Any questions on the commission? Please make sure to speak into the mics. I'm, somebody texted me, said they're trying to watch and can't hear us. So, Vice Mayor, I know this was your, it's kind of your thing. You want to speak at first on this item? Well, you want the comments first, or I'll, I'm glad to make the motion. So, go for it. A motion to that, make a motion that we approve this. Second. Any discussion on the motion? No discussion, City Clerk? Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman? Yes. Commissioner Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Item C, Resolution 10-19. Consider the approval which, if adopted, will authorize policy direction with the Commission on Submittal of a fine grant for the AOB site. Mayor, as you recall, the AOB site was under the uh, strategic goals that you have established uh, back in December and in January. And I know this is kind of premature uh, for you and Commissioner Colodi. You were not on the commission when this, when this happened. What the staff did, uh, we just prepared the application in case if you are interested to submit the grant so we would not lose the opportunity. However, um, we have submitted a finding grant previously, and the commission rejected it. We would rather not to do that. If the commission is not ready to move forward with the plan, we would rather for you to not just submit the application because it does ruin the relationship with FIND and it will take away the funding from other uh, municipalities and counties. Uh, the plan that we prepared Initially, this was back about uh, four years ago. Um, it was to do an open space, an educational pavilion, <coughs> kayak launching, and then also people were asking us at the time for additional trailer parking. That's why we took a strip out of it and made a trailer parking. Um, it doesn't mean that this is the best use out of it, but that's what at the, the time that they, they, they chose to do. But we would rather, if, if we are not ready to, to go with this plan, to not to submit the application. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Any commission discussion. Commissioner Colodi. I'm fully aware of this, uh, living in the neighborhood. I followed it from the minute that we had the uh, referendum to as the final outcome was. The plan that uh, we do have before us was prepared as a response to the uh, commercial development that had been proposed. While there are positive aspects of it, I really don't like it. I, I don't want to expand the boat parking area to any great extent. We put a lot of money in this swoop. We would like people to go over there and park over there. We have a nice wide open space there that's been there for a couple of years and is quite heavily used. Driving over here for this meeting, there was 15 cars parked out there, uh, just viewing the river on the docks and enjoying it. The plan that's proposed doesn't even have 15 parking spaces on it. Uh, it needs a lot of work. So uh, I do not want the property developed into other, anything on the ground other than a park and an open vista onto the waterway. 
Uh, a second thought comes into my mind. Well, first of all, the cost estimate now is double what it was originally. And I certainly do not want to spend more money. Uh, I'm very much aware that every time we approve anything, we run the risk of running up our taxes, and I don't want to see that. And the other fact that adds in is we, we're working with FIND right now. We have a good relationship with them on the mooring plan. I would like to see that pushed forward. If we make a decision next year to move forward on this site, what will we have lost? Nothing. We'll still have a nice big open field that people enjoy every day. So I would like to keep it as it is. Okay. Any other discussion or a motion? I make a motion that we not seek a fine grant at this time and that we discuss the issue further at our April 16th workshop. Second. 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 <laughs> Third. I heard McGurk first. We got a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion from the commission? Yes, Mr. Mayor, you, you may have expected some from me. Uh, I highly value and I hope that others in the city concur that open space is a tremendous asset to our quality of life. I wholly concur with Commissioner Colodi that this very high quality piece of waterfront should be retained in perpetuity. Uh, we can for forego the fine grant for now. Um, I will make a separate motion at a later time this evening uh, to possibly further that along that we conserve this somehow. Uh, I think it is a tremendous asset that that needs to be uh, looked at. Okay. Thanks. Any other discussion by the commission? Uh, the only thing I would add on this is, you know, like, I, I, I feel like I say this every meeting, you'll probably hear a few themes from me. Number one is the balance of progress and preservation. Number two is that asphalt doesn't solve traffic. And number three is I'm still looking for a long-term plan. So not doing this tonight, which I agree with, uh, but I also have driven by the site and it's not, it's not, I'm not the proudest of the site as it is today. If I, if I have guests in town, that's not the park I'm taking them to. That's not the place I'm taking them to is an abandoned sewer plant. Um, so I, I think we can do better. Um, so I, I agree this isn't the time, but I'm still looking for that overall. Here's the plan for you know, the area from the river to the beach, here's the plan for the area from, you know, the river to 95, and then here's the plan from 95 west, and maybe there's some other laterals in there. But, um, you know, I, I think this site uh, could play a key part of that plan. Um, but until we know kind of what the broader plan is, it's hard to really make a great decision on this site. Um, so that's my thoughts on that. We had a motion. We had a second. City Clerk. Vice Mayor Hartman. Yes. Commissioner Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes, but just to make sure, you did say that your motion was to reject it, right? Or to yes. not submit it. Okay. Yes. Not to seek it. Not to seek it. Okay. Got it. Mr. Mayor, may I ask a rule of procedure? Maybe Shh. someone would know, uh, our, our attorney or com uh, Vice Mayor Hartman might know, uh, according to Robert's rules, to make a separate motion for this property tonight. What would be the appropriate time? So uh, I can tell you that a couple of things. One is um, during your, during mayor and commissioner reports, gotcha. I think it would be the time. I, my, my advice would be what I've had success at least, and I think others have had success would be is um, rather than trying to go all the way to a motion that first time through, I think bring it, you know, getting the agreement of the commission to bring it back as an agenda yeah. item at like our next meeting that way we all kind of have time to digest it and work towards a motion at that time yes. it's really hard to go from zero to motion yes, in, in one meeting so good advice um okay item c is done item d review discussion and commission policy direction to strengthen parking requirements for special events good evening mayor and commissioners uh, this is a follow-up from the discussion at the February 19th meeting regarding special event parking. Um, our land development regulations do not currently have parking regulations for special events. Um, as a practice, staff reviews um, special events and we require a parking plan for events that propose to close existing parking areas. 
a reasonable parking plan must be provided based on the nature of the, the event, such as the time, location, um, estimated number of attendees, and so forth. Um, our staff report includes a draft recommended text amendments to the land development regulations that would require replacement parking for special events. So right now it's just a practice that we follow. It's not written down. This would propose to write it down and establish some, some criteria. Um, the new written requirement is that approved special events must provide replacement parking equal to or exceeding the required parking unless otherwise weighed by the commission. Um, events in special parking districts may use off-site parking. And um, I know Nancy and Bob, they're not here tonight, but they met with uh, the owner of the Flagler Tavern, discussed this issue in detail. Um, be happy to take any questions at this time. Any questions of staff? Any discussion by the commission? Yes. Commissioner Colodi. Uh, there is one phrase in there that says uh, that they can obtain off-street parking in residential areas. I don't like that in there. I don't think that should be there. City has enough parking lots where if they have to, they can park out on one, they can park on uh, some of the other areas, and they can carpool in. I don't want to send any more cars into the residential areas. That's one of the big problems we have now. And, and I'm glad to see that we now look at the required number of parking spaces based on various approvals that they have. I don't think a year ago we were even doing that. So I think that's a, a step forward. I just do not want the, um, the cars sent into residential areas. You know, if you, if, if you have an employee who says, you know, I live two blocks away, everybody can park at my house. Doesn't do those people any good. And I hope that they do provide that information to you uh, in writing and how they will address it. I have met with their association and I have met with the Flagler Tavern person also. So I don't see where this would be a great problem. Uh, I have other difficulties with this particular special events ordinance that we have. I don't want to hold up these changes we have now, but I. Mr. Mayor, I will be addressing them during my comments. Okay. But I think uh, with the exception of residential parking, this is a step forward. Any other discussion on this item? Yeah, my only comment is, is that we, you know, we, we need to have some form of enforcement along with this because these are usually the after hours of our parking ambassadors. So if we can schedule their hours, I don't know how flexible the scheduling their hours are, but if we could schedule them to work more during these events so that we can have some enforcement, um, it does great to put all this in writing, but if we don't enforce it, then it, it's all for naught. So uh, those are my comments. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, can I just address that one comment? Sure. Uh, I did speak with the uh, business administrator or city manager about that. And her indication was that beginning in June, that there will be an additional parking enforcing person out during these events. Okay. So. Any other discussion on this item? Commissioner Sachs. Just a quick one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would like to see along with this, it may not be pertinent, but it, to me it is, uh, there is a negative impact from these uh, craft beer events, uh, out, outdoor party events. I, 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 don't, I don't oppose them, but at the same time, the impact of the neighborhood is immense. People are parking and throwing garbage and urinating and vomiting on people's property. It's, it's really offensive. And for one thing, I'd like to see our uh, parking, uh, illegal parking fine be raised because uh, it's not exactly pertinent, but pe when people go to the lots and they realize that the fine is $25 and it's 20 to park, well, they'll take a gamble and not pay or park illegally somewhere. I, I think they're, they're getting off awful cheap gambling and th that's just part of that conversation. <coughs> but I, that was my big concern, the impact to the neighborhood. I appreciate Brian's trying to work on that, find a happy medium. So I had a, just a couple of thoughts and questions, but you, you mentioned Nancy and was it Tony, did you say? Bob. Bob. Nancy and Bob had, had met with uh, a couple of business owners, I think, in the neighborhood. Um, what was their 
Did they have concerns? What was their feedback? I, the feedback was I know this is like third, <laughs> fourth hand information, um, but they use other commercial sites that are nearby and they have arrangements. They work with each other. I know Scott from the Merchant Association may be able to speak more directly to that. Um, on the residential, I think that came from them is that um, it's why we put in only the subject driveways only subject to the approval of the residential property owners, but that was based on their feedback, um, but that can be removed if desired. But um, that, that's what we heard about how they like to park in special events. Okay. Um, another question, and then um, just to get you ready, I'm going to ask if Scott has any thoughts, if the commission doesn't object, just from hearing from, from him specifically on this item as a representative of FABA. Uh, but on the, the 1,500 feet, is that exclusive to the residential driveways, or is that also apply to the, we say either on an approved nearby commercial site or on residential driveways within 1,500 feet? The 1,500 feet is just the driveways. That's and correct. then the commercial is just nearby. nearby. Okay. Got it. So that opens the aperture a bit on that. Okay. Scott, do you have any, sure. not to put you on the spot, but you're on the spot. I was actually here to be on the spot. Okay. Um, so, conversations with uh, Commissioner Colodi and yourself. We spoke earlier today. Uh, I've spoken with the police department as well. Uh, I think as a business association, we all want to make sure that this works out well for everybody. Um, most of the larger commercial establishments that actually have parking lots, which as you know, on Flagler Avenue is not common, are looking to find other locations where they can put their people. Uh, I do have a little bit of a challenge with the notion of the same number of parking spaces or greater. I would like to make sure that that's not an, an enforceable thing where you say, okay, look, we're giving up eight parking places. We want you to find 12. Um, just something that I heard when uh, Brian was reading a minute ago. Otherwise, I think that we're all trying to work together here as far as those kinds of special events where parking lots are going to be given up. I think that's important. All of us want to make sure that people can get to the events and that the neighborhood is, is happy. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So my, you know, this is a, an issue that I'm, probably as close to as Commissioner Colodi, but, you know, my concern, again, is, is balance. And, you know, I don't want to, I want to be able to enforce what we have on the books, as I said at the last meeting, um, and and have that not be, you know, kind of all over the place and, and making sure what we have is, is reasonable and uh, and isn't um, overly deleterious on the, on the business owners. So um, that being said, I also know the residents have concerns as well. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just hopeful this doesn't, if we swing too far in the other direction and, and Flagler becomes a ghost town, that, that's a, that's a whole other problem that we'll have to solve. So I just hope we're, we're mindful of that as we, as we proceed, but I certainly get that we have to coexist with residents and, and business owners. So that, that's the, that's the balance. So, all right. Any other commission discussion? not to have a motion on this item what's the motion i thought it was a discussion oh it is it's yeah. just discussion yeah sorry uh, i would um, i'd suggest we direct uh staff to prepare uh an actual motion to make the amendments that are shown here in with the exception of the residential parking okay any objections to having staff work on that? Do we need a formal motion or do we do the head nod no, thing? No, but we need a little consensus on yeah. this, a bit of an amendment, so. Yeah. All right, let's just do it as a formal motion so we're, we're clear. So we got motion to ask staff to, to draw this up formally and bring it back to the commission. I think it'll go through the whole kind of process to change an ordinance. With removing the residential. With removing yeah. the residential. I, I will make that motion. Okay, we have a motion. Second. I have a second. No other discussion? And so again, this is a motion not approving this tonight. It's a motion asking staff to continue working on this and bringing it back. Jake seconded. Colodi first, second. City Clerk. <clears throat> Commissioner Colodi. Yes. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman. Yes. Mayor Owen. Uh, yeah, yes. All right. Item D. Carrie, do you have everything you need on that one? Enough clarity? Okay. 
8A, Ordinance of Second Reading of Public Hearing. Ordinance 9-19, conduct the second reading of public hearing and ordinance would implement amendments to the city's land development regulations to strengthen and clarify the criteria for removal of historic and specimen trees. City Attorney, read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance number 9-19, an ordinance amending the land development regulations, amending Article 2, Section 204, New Smyrna Beach Tree Protection Regulations Definitions, amending Article 6, Section 604, 604 051 tree preservation amending section 604052 trees on single family properties providing for public hearing providing for conflicting ordinances and providing an effective date I'd remind the commission thank you carrie i'd remind the commission this is an item we had talked about last we continued it to date certain today uh, the thought was that we would uh, if the commission's agreeable we would actually continue it to a now date certain of april the 2nd which is the time that was found to be amenable to everyone. So, so consider moved. a motion. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Sachs. I guess so, yes. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman. Yes. Commissioner Colodi. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Okay. So that item is continued until April 2nd 2019 at a special meeting of the Commission item B ordinance 11-19 second reading public hearing of an ordinance would amend the FY 2018-2019 budget for the airport fund City Attorney, read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance number 11-19, an ordinance amending budget ordinance number 52-18, 5418, 5718, 0119, and 0819, current expenses and capital outlay required for 2018-2019, providing for reversion of unencumbered funds, providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Move to approve. Second. So we have a public hearing on this first. The public hearing is open. <laughs> Any members of the public wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, close the public hearing. Move to approve. Order motion. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman. Yes. Commissioner Colodi. Yes. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Ordinance 11-19 is adopted. Ordinance 12-19 and Resolution 11-19. Ordinance 12-19 conduct the second reading public hearing, which if adopted would amend Chapter 70 of the City Code and allow the City Manager to promulgate rules regarding use of public property and establish Section 70-6. 163 provide for trespass warnings under certain circumstances city attorney read the ordinance by title only ordinance number 12-19 an ordinance amending chapter 70 streets sidewalks and other public places city code of ordinances amending article 1 to create section 70-5 to prohibit encroachments in public rights of way amending article 5 to amend section 70-162 to allow city manager to promulgate rules regarding use of public property Further amending Article 5 to establish 70, Section 70-163, providing for trespass warnings under cer certain circumstances for public property, providing for codification, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing an effective day. Effective date. Thank you. We have a staff report. Since first reading, um, there were some commission comments at first reading. There have been three changes made to this ordinance in response to those comments. Um, the first one was not in response to the comments, and it doesn't actually show up in your um, Acela item, um, but it's for the encroachments in the right-of-way, recognizing that there may be approved license agreements um, that would approve you know, driveway pavers or things of that nature. Those are not prohibited if we've approved them. The second change had to deal with uh, city commission approval of city manager's rules. That language has been inserted into 70-162, and you'll also see that the following item on your agenda um, falls in line with that. It'll be your approval of city manager rules. The third change 
had to deal with trespass warnings, the language that talked about uh, any city employee having that authority. Uh, when I looked at that section more closely, it, it had to deal with uh, when rights of way were closed. So I amended the language to say it's limited to authorized individuals. So the same people who are authorized to do it, the police department, city manager, um, that language was cleaned up to avoid any confusion about who who has that authority. So we can't trespass people anymore? You, Man. It's gone. Okay. <laughs> Shucks. <laughs> All right, public hearing is open. Any member of the public wish to speak on this item? While you're coming up, somebody text me. Go ahead. The YouTube stream I don't think is working at the minute. Gentlemen, somebody text me. Robert Reese, 391 Granada Street. On the uh, last meeting, I vis watched it on the video on the screen. It was a very good job you have with these cameras. I really enjoyed that. Uh, Public places and properties. I mean, uh, there was mention of just city property at one time during that meeting. And uh, with the right of ways, the city manager will have the right to uh, correct those violations or who. My main thing going there is where residents are planting trees and all on the right of ways, right underneath power lines that knock out my power every now and then. And the Utilities Commission says, no, we can't remove that tree. The City Commission in previous years says, we can't do nothing about it. But yet, I lose power every now and then because these big Washingtonians are underneath the high-tension lines. And it's in the right-of-way. And I think that somewhere we need to have the authority and ability to remove this stuff out of the right-of-ways that the citizens are putting there. Now, I don't know if this is going to give her power to, for the citizen to come to her and do it, or where would they go? And on the trespassing, uh, I thought that was going to be just on city properties, such as Riverside Park doing festivals and stuff like that, and uh, not public, state-owned right of ways so i didn't i can have a clear understanding that and maybe i can be cleaned up somehow or explained at least thank you thank you we've trespassed every tree in the city right away but they just will not move as much as we try C city attorney is there any clarity you can add to uh, that the trespass warnings, it's for uh, when somebody violates the rules while in a city facility, building, or outdoor area, including municipal parks. We don't have the authority to decide the rules for county facilities, so this is dealing with city facilities. Okay. Yeah, as far as the tre trees and landscaping in the right of way, Mayor, um, concerning uh, Mr. Reese's question, um, Normally what happens is they have to have a license agreement to do the landscaping. Probably the areas he's talking about or the trees he's talking about, they planted long time ago before the city enacted the licensing agreement. Yeah. And at this point, they're probably historic. <laughs> Any other members of the public wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing discussion by the commission. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, I guess it's 8B1, uh, line 60, where there's a two-day notice, and after two days, the city may correct the violation by removing and disposing. Um, I just have some concerns. Where do you think that's a, a, an adequate amount of time? If you're gone for the weekend, you could have done something, planted some flags or something for a specific day and you come home and everything is gone what was that line number line number 60 remedies of violations number B I had the same concern he speaks <laughs> <laughs> okay any staff comments on that concern um, if you want to increase it to three four five something in that range okay 
I mean, seven, I, I start getting a little nervous. You know, we have liability concerns. Uh, yeah, yeah well, I was just, I mean, is was it specific because it follows other ordinances? Is it in line with something like that? Yeah, I, f I found other city cities that use two days. Um, so I, I could say within two days or as reasonably practicable, um, but it might be better to go with like a five, just a hard number. So if they're out of town, would they technically have received the notice? Or does that does that clock start when we issue it or when they receive it and like sign for it if it's certified? Of, it says date of receipt of the notice. Yeah. So, so if they're out of town, they can say they, they wouldn't receive it until they get back. So. But it, I, I don't know because I know with code enforcement, the day that they can each actually put a notice on the building and that's the date they were notified. And they received it, yeah. So, okay. I'd be more comfortable with five days. I think five is reasonable. So, I would make that recommendation. Okay. No, Mr. Mayor. Discussion. Uh, I was concerned with the two days only from the uh, aspect as to how we document it uh, and follow through with it. I would have no objection to raising it a couple of days over that. But okay. I was I was happy with the two. I was happy with the explanation I got. Good. All right. Do we have a motion on ordinance number 12-19? Motion to approve as amended with the five-day. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. And to clarify, that's on line 60 and line 61 and any other places where that two day may occur. There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, city clerk. Vice Mayor Hartman. Yes. Commissioner Colodi. Yes. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Ordinance number 12-19 is adopted. Resolution number 11-19. Approval of resolution which if adopted would approve rules for public facilities. City Attorney, do you have a staff report? Um, this or? parallels with the item you just approved. Yep. Um, the rules are about not leaving personal items unattended at walkways, pavilions, where it impedes the ability for other people to use those uh, facilities. Um, no loitering or prowling near playgrounds, play equipment, restrooms. Um, no defacing, damaging, um, tampering city property. Um, no discharging liquids or solids into, you know, splash pad areas, fountains, those types of areas. Um, not entering flower beds or landscaped areas to damage or trees, shrubs, or landscape material. And specifying playground equipment and splash pads may only be used by children and their accompanying adult. And those are the rules that we're looking for commission approval for. And this would also authorize the manager to post these rules at the facilities. Okay. Any discussion or do I have a motion on this item? So move. Second. Any discussion on Mr. this Mayor, item? Mr. Clody. Just a general comment. It's unfortunately, it's unfortunate we live in a society where common sense doesn't always apply and we have to pass things like this. That was the only comment? Yes. <laughs> General observation on the Saving state of society. Myself, All right. right. <laughs> I like it. Any other discussion? All right. City Clerk. Commissioner Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Out of the gun there. Been there many times. Motion 11 19 is, or resolution 11 19 is passed. All right, item D, quasi-judicial public hearing of application number CCSL-1-19, which will allow for the replacement of an existing elevated wood deck, an existing dune walk. City Commission will now conduct the quasi-judicial public hearing. Before we go further, if anyone has any ex parte communications to disclose, now is the time to do it. This includes the substance of any communication and the identity of the person with whom the communication took place written communications, and or site visits. We'll just go left to right. Vice Mayor, anything to disclose? McGurk? No. Nope. I have none. Commissioner Sachs? No. Commissioner Colody? None. Okay. First here from 
Mr. Fields, we swear him in. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Fields, if you would state your educational and professional backgrounds. Education, I have a bachelor's of science degree in civil engineering from the University of Maryland. I have a master's in business administration from the University of Florida. My, my position here is the director of development services and coastal environmental resiliency. I'm a registered professional engineer in the state of Florida. I have 24 years of experience in land development, engineering, planning, permitting, public administration, and related services. Does any member of the commission or the audience wish to question Mr. Fields on his qualifications? None other objections to qualifying him as an expert witness in the area of land development. Hearing no objections, he's determined to be an expert in the area of land development, qualified to give opinion testimony. Mr. Fields, are you familiar with this application? Yes. Please state whether it's consistent with the city's comprehensive plan and your recommendation on this application. Yes, it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, this item is proposed construction seaward of the city's coastal construction setback line, which requires city commission approval. Uh, specifically, it's for the replacement of an existing second floor deck, wood stairway, wood landing, and replacement of a dune walkover east of the city's coastal construction setback line on an oceanfront single family residence at 4081 Hill Street. Subject property is a three-story residence. It was constructed in 1964. County records, the best we could find, show the date of the construction for the deck and walkway. It was approximately 1985. Uh, the proposed construction plan is shown in your agenda packet as Exhibit C, and site photos are included as Exhibit F. The replacement, as proposed, would decrease the existing footprint, thus having less deck area extend past the CCSL line. The proposed deck, um, would extend only about three feet east of the CCSL line, whereas the current deck extends about nine feet beyond the line. So they're pulling it back six feet, still extending over by three, but they're pulling it back six. Uh, the LDR lists nine criteria that must be met in order for the city commission to approve construction <coughs> of any structure east of the CCSL. Um, staff has reviewed that criteria and determined that all applicable criteria have been met. Staff does recommend approval, um, noting that the application um, is a rebuild with a, a smaller footprint um, and less net encroachment. Staff's recommendation is subject to the following four conditions, which I'll, I'll read for the record. First, is that should, any, should any gopher tourist borough be found present at the time of construction, the applicant um, shall provide either a relocation permit for the tortoise if the borough is active or the applicant provides documentation that the borough is inactive. Um, <sighs> Second, the applicant provides the city planning department with a dune replanting plan if dune vegetation is disturbed. Third, the applicant installs required informational signage, including laws concerning the prohibition of disturbing sea turtle nests, dates indicating sea turtle nesting season, and prohibition against disturbing state-protected vegetation and dunes. And finally, a building permit must be applied for within one year and obtained within 18 months of approval. Um, one item to note here is that there is a, a permit and construction underway for some renovation to the structure um, that is in progress. Um, that is the existing deck still is in place. I visited the site today to confirm that that is indeed the current condition. Uh, Mr. Mark Davis is the contractor representing the applicant. He is here tonight as well to uh, answer any questions. Staff does recommend approval. Thank you. Would any member of the commission or the applicant like to question Mr. Fields on his testimony? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fields, the deck, the second story deck is east of the setback, correct? Yes, by three feet. Uh, currently, we're allowing walkovers and uh, sand retaining fences are the only allowed use east of the coastal setback. Is that correct? It says any structure. So um, I don't believe that that's ex it's limited to just the dune walkover. It's subject to city commission approval. I, sh I should note this is in my role as director, the first CCSL item that I've come across. So if there's historical knowledge here otherwise, um, you know, I'd have to research that. Is it possible that the deck was built before we even had considerations of coastal separate <coughs> lines and they just. I, yeah, 1985. The DEP line, I believe, was earlier than that. It's back in the early 80s. Yes, that, um, I, I visited the site, just walked by it, and uh, it looked like they stopped work. Um, do you know why? Work is ongoing on the structure itself. They initially um, did some demolition work on the walkway 
Um, however, that was stopped when um, it was a, they understood they needed to get this permit that's before you tonight. Um, and then the existing deck is substantially in place the way it's always been. And there's no dune re uh, or CO uh, replacement plan uh, that they need or because none were taken out? Uh, that's to be determined if a revegetation plan is required. Um, Mr. Davis may be able to speak to, um, to that item. If he cares but, to. But one of the conditions was that if there was disturbance, they would replace them. I mean, that was, I think that was the, the yes. condition, yeah. Yes. Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, I'd like to put your mind at rest. I have some. Swear in here. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Please state your name. Mark Davis. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, I took some photos. I think this will clarify that question. I'd like to pass them over to you. Sure. The first photo I'm going to show you right here is the existing deck. Oh, and how hang hang on. They've got to, they got to be able to hear you in the mic, though, so just you'll hand them to me and I'll pass them down and then you can go talk in that mic That's right there. That's the okay. Got it. The first photograph shows the existing deck. I drew a black vertical line to show you where we're pulling it back. The existing deck comes out 20 foot, six inches seaward of the building. We're pulling it back approximately seven feet so that we're only going into the CCSL line three feet. I've been a contractor in New Smyrna, general contractor for 38 years, so I can address your question, Mr. Sachs. I've dealt with uh, coastal construction setback lines ever since I've been in business and built on the ocean in New Smyrna Beach. It used to be a state line, then the city put their own coastal construction setback line. So we have dual authorities. I applied to the first authority, which was the state, for the dune walkover structure, of which I received a permit approximately six months ago. So we started on that, but we had an inspection on the existing uh, permit and the inspector came out and he questioned whether we had the right to do any work uh, forward at New Smyrna line, uh, line. And so we just stopped. And I said, I'll just wait until after this goes through city commission. So uh, the second picture that I submitted to you shows the vegetation. And since we're pulling it back, we are not going to be involved with any vegetation at all or any dune structure. We've monitored the site ever since we've been there doing construction work. We have seen no go, go for uh, turtles or any uh, beds of any type. We haven't seen any activity to that regard. Thank you, sir. Okay. Certainly. Does any other members of the commission wish to question at that point Mr. Fields or the applicant? on their testimony. Question for Mr. Fields, sir. Sure. <clears throat> Mr. Fields, uh, you were not here, I believe, at the previous commission when we began discussions on where we should actually place our lines. Um, that seems to have died. I, we never really followed up, uh, am I correct? Uh, where the correct line should be in consideration of coast, uh, coastal sea rise and loss of dune and if there was a past discussion on the on where it should be located you're correct i was not there uh, we do have a map it's clearly shown it's available to applicants so the the definition of where it's at today is very well established yeah but not the potential adjustment that i'm aware of and I think we, we have to, con hang on just a minute if we could. I think we have to consider this one as the criteria is today, and certainly if there's concerns, further discussion needed about potentially moving, I think we can, we have to have that as a separate discussion for this public hearing, I believe. Any other questions of the applicant or city staff? Does the applicant have any questions of city staff? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, but okay. I do have a recommendation. One of the requirements so that I could submit to city commission was that I had to get a right away letter from the county. It took me two and a half months to get a letter. And since this was an existing deck, it seems like there ought to be something in the ordinance that would allow the building department to review this rather than having to go through the process. It also cost my owner $2,350 for me to appear here tonight, not because of my fees, but because it was a $2,000 application fee and we had to pay $350 in order to get the names and all the legal information to do this. 
and it seems like it could have been handled administratively, but because the ordinance specifically states that any work within the CCSL line has to be by city commission approval, uh, we had to go through this process. And as you can see, it was an existing deck that we were modifying and pulling back. My recommendation would be maybe to consider language for any new construction in the CCSL area. Uh, also, if I may comment, I think it's a good thing that the New Smyrna Beach has their own CCSL line because I think it gives New Smyrna the opportunity to regulate more activity going forward because the state line, in my, in my case on this property, is 60 feet east. Uh, so it's seaward 60 feet of what the city line is. So that gives the city a lot of discretionary authority as to what is going to go in that area between where your line is and where the state line. So I think it's a good thing for the city and for owners that have property because it helps to protect them. And as we can see, there's differential erosion practices. If you study longshore and short shore transport of sand from the inlet to the south end of New Smyrna Beach, you'll see that it occurs further south than the inlet. And so it gives the city an opportunity to help construct additional barriers to protect property and or habitat. So I think it's a good thing that you have that. But I would ask you to revisit this ordinance for remodeling of existing decks and to retain your authority on new construction in this area. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll uh, take that under advisement. I'd say the same as it did to Commissioner Sachs. That's a separate item from this specific thing. So we'll hold that discussion for a, a future meeting. Um, and when you said it cost them 23.50 to show up here today, I was about to change professions real quick. Because <laughs> um, I'm not getting paid that to be here, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Uh, any member of the public wish to speak on this item, please limit your remarks to matters of which you have personal knowledge. No members of the public will close the public hearing. All right. Motion to approve with staff's conditions. Second. Sorry. I didn't mean to no, you're good. There. No, you just we're, we're right there. I'm trying to follow the script, yeah, but apologies. we're there. City clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Sachs. No. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman. Yes. Commissioner Colodi? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Application number CCSL 1-19 is approved. Item E, conduct a quasi-judicial public hearing on special exception application number SE-6-18, which will allow for public parking lot on property located at 611 Jefferson Street. We'll now conduct a quasi-judicial public hearing. Uh, same, same thing with the ex parte communications. Now is the time to disclose. Anyone have any communications to disclose? Hearing, hearing none. Okay. First hill from Mr. Fields. You're still under oath uh, and still qualified. Are you familiar with this application and state whether it's consistent with the comp plan and your recommendation? Yes, it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, this is a city project and requests a special exception for approval of a, to allow the use for a public parking lot at 611 Jefferson Street. The property consists of two parcels, both of which are zoned R3, um, and our, our code requires a special exception for any public use of those lands. Public parking lot is proposed. Um, subject properties are currently vacant. Um, if the special exception is approved, the city has plans to build a paved par public parking lot containing approximately 21 parking spaces. The plan has not been engine engineered yet, but our intent, based on our site review, is to save all specimen trees and for stormwater treatment to be handled on site in an underground exfiltration system. The site is close to Pettis Park and the Black Heritage Museum. The parking lot would be open to the public and will allow overflow parking for Pettis Park, the museum, and other nearby public uses. Uh, the special exception meets all the applicable criteria in the LDR. At the January 7th Planning and Zoning Board meeting, the board, board, the board voted 7-0 to recommend approval. Staff recommends approval with the condition that a Class II site plan be submitted for review and approval by the city technical review staff. 
Um, just a couple of items, Mayor, just that were mentioned tonight. Um, we did our standard noticing that's required pull, per the LDR requirements. That information is included in your staff report. Um, and just what's before you tonight is just the special exception to allow the use. Um, at any, any time, the commission could uh, revisit the project or the, the desire to move forward with it. Um, up to and including the award of the construction contract. So tonight is again, just to approve the use on the property. Um, be glad to take any questions. City Commission, have any questions for staff on this report? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Did we actually do any parking studies to see about the need? Like how often would this be used? I'm gonna to defer to Tony. He's more familiar with, with the need and the desire behind the project. She's got to swear you in. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. At the February 26th commission meeting, there was a packet attachment that went into detail that right now there isn't any designated parking for Pettis Park. The right-of-way on the north side of the park is signed, so you can't park there. Um, there is some right-of-way area, but no designated spaces on the east side or north and south side of the park. Um, I should say it's the north side that has the no parking signs. In front of the museum, there's a right of way, but there's no designated parking. So the purpose of this was to provide designated parking for both the park and the museum, especially in the case of the park, since there's, and it's said in the February 26th agenda item that there's four regional events, the MLK Celebration, Black Heritage Festival, Corn Festival, and Chisholm Alumni event that draw people from, you know, even outside the city. So there's really a lacking of parking and other parks that the city has typically have parking. So uh, especially a uh, uh, a large park like this, relatively speaking, large, it doesn't have any designated parking. That was the intent. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions from the commission for city staff? If not, we'll now hear from any members of the public wishing to testify on this application. Again, please limit remarks to matters of which you have personal knowledge. City attorney will swear you in. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, like I said before, I don't want to repeat. I know Brother Harold. I got to sing with him Sunday in the choir. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll let y'all work that out. <laughs> so it's it's a matter of need, and there's no need for it. He lives in another neighborhood. He lives essentially a good five minutes away and I think if you put a parking lot there you're asking for more crime and it's right in my backyard and I don't see the need for it the Black Heritage Museum is a wonderful place it's the only place where a video of my mother is this is a video of my mother right now so I love that place but I, the designated parking can be solved easily with curb, with curb, uh, it, so you can designate if you want people to park there. Uh, I don't think adding a parking lot uh, is the answer for no designated parking. Uh, Please keep that in mind when you make a decision. I ask you not to make a decision tonight on the uh, acceptance of the special use. I ask that you please hold off until further so we can inform all of the residents in that community what they intend to do, because I don't think everybody knows. Uh, it does say something that you have to give uh, special consideration for something that 
is supposed to be a neighborhood. So if you have to give special consideration, special exception, then it doesn't fit the criteria. It doesn't fit the fabric of the community. That's all I'm going to say. Hang on, Mike. Hang on, hang on. You, you're now qualified as a witness, so we got questions. Okay. <laughs> all right. Commissioner McGurk. Thank you. Um, is the lot empty right now? Yes, it is. And by the way, you know, I sympathize with you. I certainly hope that, you know, if this moves forward or if it doesn't, that staff has been able to reach out or will reach out to you mm -hmm. and try to work with you and address the safety concerns that you have. Um, first of all, has staff done that? Uh, no, not as of yet. Okay, do you have, can you give us any ideas of what your safety concerns are and what may alleviate those concerns if this were a parking lot? Well, well, first of all, more traffic. It's going to, uh, the, the neighborhood has already increased in traffic and just like Magnolia, the, the traffic comes through there now. It's through traffic to cut past US 1 to 44. So there's a lot of that, a lot of stop signs being ran. And I think if you put a, another park there, it's just somewhere f for someone to go. Um, so right now it's an empty lot. You're concerned that if they're allowed access to it, it'll become like a hangout? Or a just hang yes. Kind of yes, like just a, a place for young people to go and kind of loiter? Correct. We have a place for that, and it's called the park. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> and this is almost across the street from it, right? Correct. Okay. All right, well, if this moves forward tonight, I think that there's some things that we can do to um, address those concerns, and certainly you live contiguous to this property? Yes. Okay, and I, you know, I certainly share your concern, and would not, if I live contiguous to it, I wouldn't want a bunch of people hanging out or create a, to have someone create a situation where people are hanging out all night long. Um, so we don't want to encourage that. Correct. So I certainly, um, hope and i think i can expect from staff that we can work with you to figure out what we could do to make you feel safe and keep people out of there as much as possible when they're not simply using it for the park okay um, and i understand that they bought this property the city and i'm hoping that they didn't buy the property uh with the knowledge of trying to get a special uh exemption to change it there is you can put a house there just as easy and bless someone that has a family with children. Um, I think that would be an option. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of the witness? Seeing none, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other members of the public wishing to testify on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Any closing remarks? From the city just right. one mr mayor okay i just wonder about the value of 21 spots to cause a negative impact to neighbors i've been to just about all the different events at pettis park it's a, one of my favorite parks and we always find a place to park so i i just wonder why we're doing this that's all i have Yeah, I have no objections to if I'd like to speak. Any objections from the commission hearing no. from staff? City attorney will swear you in. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Um, my name is Donna Gray Banks, <laughs> and I'm the community resource coordinator. What The other thing that we're not looking at is there is a daycare there that takes care of about... 80 children and there's also no designated parking for them including the black heritage museum and including the shotgun house so you know when we talk about special exceptions we're still talking about special exceptions for people who have to get handicapped people children and there is no designated parking in a four acre park 
That doesn't include the Black Heritage Museum. That doesn't include the Shotgun House. That doesn't include the 80 children that come in and out of that center. So it's not just about uh, the community. It's about the children. It's about the park. It's about people who need to get to the park efficiently. And so I want you to think about all of those things when you make a decision this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from Ms. Banks? From the commission? <laughs> uh, I think it's from the commission that would have questions at this point. Was this properly noticed or did it have to be noticed? I think Mr. Mayor's testimony was that it was, yes. It was noticed. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I had one question, and I don't know who might know this, it's one of you, and it doesn't have to be specific to the to the day or minute, but do you know when we actually approved the purchase of this? Very recently it closed. It yeah. closed on February, we approved it on February 26th? We had a CRA meeting and a city commission meeting with this agenda item on February 26th. And then the purchase closed one week ago, Tuesday, March 19th. Yeah. And okay. okay. So I guess I just wanted to, to document that we, I think this was the plan all along. We're, we're executing the plan. So it, I, I hear there's concerns. I, I wish I'd heard these concerns earlier. Um, I'm not opposed to deviating from a plan, but I, I just I hate to get Hate to get at this point where we literally have already written the check and now we're and now we're debating, you know, again it goes back to planning and let's set a plan, execute a plan, in setting it, making sure we've got all the right buy in, all the right constituents are involved, whatever we have to do before we get to this point where we now have a piece of property that we're debating. So Mr. Mayor, I have a question for Mr. Fields. They still have to come before for us to do a, the official parking lot layout, correct? To where we can deal with buffers and lighting and all that stuff? The, it'd be class two site plan, which only goes to the city technical review staff. Um, you could make that a, a stipulation of your approval tonight that that be brought to the city commission, however. Okay. And like my other concern is I know that the stormwater is gonna have to stay on site, but that's, that area has historically had issues with flooding. It's the reason why we don't have sidewalks on Dust Street. So, um, you know, I know we're going to develop this in-house, so if the city engineer could also look at that to see if there was ways to help mitigate some of that also, I certainly would appreciate it. So. Um, okay. <clears throat> I'd entertain a motion that included the terms you, you mentioned about the, the review of the, of the site at a minimum. I'm no official <laughs> on planning or engineering. So um, I'll make a motion okay. to approve with the condition that this comes back to the commission for site plan approval. And anyway, if I get a second, yeah. I'll, I'll second. And what I'd like to do is make sure that we meet with Mr. Washington and work with him on how that looks and what kind of safety procedures we can put in that parking lot. Certainly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we actually could close it after, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, we could actually close it after dark, could we not? I don't think it's planned to be lit, so there could be, it could be posted, you know, closes you could, at dusk. You could install a gate if you, yeah. if you desire to do so. So, okay. Yeah. All right, I have a motion, I have a second. Any more discussion on that motion from the commission? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner. Uh, I must admit, uh, I followed this project as it went along uh, through the purchase. I saw the conceptual site plans. But I must say, I was a little remiss about how it fit into the neighborhood completely. Uh, until I hear a little bit uh, more about it and go out and really give it a close look, I can't support it at this time because I, I really think we got to give a little more uh, thought to it. At least I do. Perhaps the rest of the commission feels differently, but I couldn't support it now. Okay. 
Any other discussion on the motion? If not, City Clerk. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman. Yes. Commissioner Colodi. No. Commissioner Sachs. No. Mayor Owen. <laughs> yes, under the provisions that we, this isn't, this isn't the end all be all, as Brian Fields testified. Application number SC-6-18 is approved. Was that really 6-18 or was that 6-19? It was SE 6-18. It is, okay. Ordinance's first reading. Ordinance, conduct first reading ordinance adopted, which if adopted would amend the code of ordinances, chapter 18, animals. City attorney will read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance number 13-19, an ordinance amending the code of ordinances, amending chapter 18, animals to revise the animal control regulations, providing for codification, providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Thank you. Second reading of that will be held at the regular city commission meeting schedule for April 9th, 2019. Item B, ordinance number 14-19. Just a comment, sir. Sure. I'm sorry. I'm remiss. That's all right. Uh, I'd like to make a comment for you all to uh, understand my position on this 1319. Okay. Uh, not to be deleterious or offend anyone, but for me, uh, you know, I had attempted, there were quite a few people that came forward and asking for an urban chicken to be included into the animal code. And I'm very happy to see that we have done that. But also in here is what I'll call a political poison pill. And that shows that we are reducing the amount of time that animals will be held at the, at the uh, facility on Glencoe. They've reduced it from seven days to three days. These are, pets are family members. They're treasured animals. They understand us, although we don't understand them. I think they have so much more value in our lives that we should give them the same consideration. I understand that seven days holding is more reasonable. It is for me, but to find out if I was out of town and my animal got loose, someone was taking care of it, to find out, to go in there and say, oh, we have your animal, it's in the freezer. I would tear the place apart, frankly. And there's one more item in there, and that's the tethering of animals. It, the, uh, the Humane Society says that tethering is just cruel and unusual punishment, just flat out. Uh, I'm not gonna labor you by reading from their documents, but it's just an awful thing we do. So along with that, when we consider this the second time, I'd like to see those two items struck from there. I, I could tell you exactly where they are, but um, <coughs> we can come back at the next reading and I'll describe exactly which lines they are. Okay. But you may have read them and, and seen that. Mayor, if I may, sure. um, uh, during the briefing with Commissioner Sachs, he brought up these issues. Uh, I have met with, uh, with Katie and uh, Animal Control Officer and Sergeant Claudio today. Um, it doesn't mean that the, the three days or seven days it's going to make a big difference. Um, he make a valid point. It's after if you have your animal in three days, it's going to, it would be actually put out for adoption. But it would not be put to sleep after three days. It doesn't mean that. Also, if we you move it to seven days, that's mean you have to pay extra uh, money for it. Uh, right now, I think it's about uh, is it forty, fifty thousand, which means if we change it to seven, it will be double. So I ask uh, the animal control officer to talk to the Humane Society, come out with the figures, so we'll be prepared for the next meeting, 
And also, I ask one of the board members to be present at the time, so I would ask if you have any questions. To clarify, the three days, they don't kill the animal. No, they they just put it up for adoption. It okay. would be a for after adoption. three days. So they right. hold it for three days, and then after that, it can be put into the adoption right. pool. Okay, thank you. That's not my understanding. And uh, so okay. you all look at it, because they'll kill your animal after three days. Okay. So we're going to have folks from yes. from the Humane Society here yes, at the second their reading. Because contract is up for uh, renewal, so they will be here anyway. So we ask them to be present. Okay. Do, do you know what lines those were, or if you would just? Yes. I'll, I'll find it. No, no worries. I'll, I'll find it. It's on page eleven, yep. and it's section eighteen dash two five one, and it's sub two. There's a holding period, and it talks about that. Got it. Okay. And also, please consider the tethering. It's yep. Okay. Item B, Ordinance fourteen dash nineteen, which, uh, if adopted, would amend the city code of ordinances, chapter thirty. City attorney, read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance number fourteen dash nineteen, an ordinance amending the city code, amending chapter thirty, businesses, article two, peddlers, can canvassers, solicitors, section thirty dash thirty three, permitting. Providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, and providing an effective date. Okay, thank you. Second reading of public hearing will be held at the regular city commission meeting scheduled for April 9th, 2019. Item 10. Oh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Quick mention on this one. Yep. Could we please add, I did not see language. If we have a sign in our yard that says no solicitors, I could not find that language. If, um, I, sh I had... It's in the section. It's not being amended. It exists in our code. You, they are not allowed to solicit if you have a sign that says no solicitors. That also, you can sign up at the police department, and when they get their permit, your address is on a list that they see that they're not allowed to go to that house. I, I appreciate you explaining that to me at briefing, but I could not find that language. Gotcha. I, that's okay, uh, Carrie. Thank you. It's, okay, it's, it's, it's existing, and okay. Okay. Thank you. Will you just provide that to him, and not right now, but just yeah. at a future, future email mm -hmm. to the commission. All right. Item 10. Gentlemen, we're slightly over. We've been taking a break at 9, but we're real close. I think we can. Do anybody need a break, or can we push, push forward? I'm yes for a break. No good. for. All right. Let's do it. Item 10. Economic development. Consider the appointment of citizen to serve. We've got... One, two, three, four, five. We got seven or eight names. We had some last minute applications that were provided literally at the meeting. Um, I really haven't looked at these. What's the commission's pleasure? Any nominations? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I would like to nominate uh, Anthony DiFilippo, who has extensive background in the uh, forming of. Uh, citizen agencies, visitor bureaus, Norfolk, uh, Virginia. He actually uh, formed it, and it's been functioning and operating for a number of years. He also has a lot of experience in the hotel business. Now, you may find that that's something that I don't particularly care for, but I do care to have somebody who's expert in it in, as to how they can integrate into our community. Right now, they're just like separate towns. We need somebody with experience as to how them, how we could bring them in. How we okay. can bring hotels in? How we can bring them in <laughs> okay. well, I was like, as a reasonable <laughs> member of the community, a responsible, productive community member. How Thank can, you for that, how we can for include, clarifying. How we can include them, I think is what you. <laughs> well, they're here. <laughs> okay, we have one nomination. Commissioner I, have Sachs. A I appreciate uh, Commissioner Colodi's uh, nominee. He seems eminently qualified, but so is mine. And I, I'd like to add, Mr. David Score, I don't believe he has any special interests, which is kind of nice. So I'll nominate Mr. Score. Okay. Any other nominations? Hearing none. Two nominations. Um, I, I would actually like to nominate um, Dan uh, Morin. 
I spoke to him, and uh, I think he's I think he's very qualified. So we have three nominations. Sorry to do that, but that means we have to do the secret okay. ballot thing. I have ballots. Sir. You ready? All right, let's do it. It's not a when secret ballot. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. When did he apply? Uh, I'd have to look at the application. The 18th. Yes, 318. Okay. You, you applied prior to publishing. Thank you. Yes, The results of the balloting is Commissioner Colodi uh, votes for Mr. D. Filippo. Commissioner McGurk votes for Mr. Moran. Commissioner Sachs votes for Mr. Score. Vice Mayor Hartman votes for Mr. Score. Mayor Owen votes for Mr. Moran. <clears throat> okay. So given that case, correct me, uh, City Attorney, uh, if I'm wrong, but uh, Mr. Filippo will be eliminated from the running. Yeah. And... I will pass out one more ballot with either Mr. Moran or Mr. Score. Okay. <laughs> this is riveting stuff. There you go. Okay, the results of the second ballot are Vice Mayor Hartman votes for Mr. Score. The Mayor votes for Mr. Score. Commissioner Sachs votes for Mr. Score. I think it's the only votes we need to count. Commissioner Colodi votes for Mr. Score. Commissioner McGurk votes for Mr. Moran. Okay. Mr. Score Mr. is thereby appointed. Mr. Score has been appointed. Congratulations, Mr. Score. Thank you for your dedication to the city. That term expires June 8th of 2022. Item B, the Leisure Activities Advisory Board. 
the appointment of two members to fill two unexpired terms to expire June 22nd, 2019. Uh, we have one, two, three, four nominations listed here, or four appointments, applications, sorry. And then, I, again, we we're handed some at the last minute. I don't know, there may be some in that stack. So, do we have any nominations? Mayor Brenda Stauffer. Nomination for Brenda Stauffer. Any other nominations? Hearing none. Uh, we need, we need two, two members, so. Any other nominations? Okay, can we take a vote on Brenda Stauffer? Do we need to do them both at once, sir? Uh, yeah, it will individually, I think. Individually? That's what I was gonna do, yeah. yeah. All right, okay. city clerk, will do vote on Brenda Stauffer. All right, sir. Commissioner Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Brenda Stauffer has been nominated to the Leisure Activities Advisory Board. Need one more nomination, gentlemen. I got an email from, didn't get a chance to speak to her, but I got an email from. Oh, I can hear you. I got an email from uh, a Pam Eisen. Which I didn't get a chance to speak with her, but she put forth the effort. I was impressed by the application. I think it was of Mary Jacobs. Is that the one that has the nickname Honeybee on it? I think it was. What's the nickname? I may be, I may be mixing up folks here. Um, but let me get to that one. Yep, you're right. Yeah. So I, I'd I'd like to nominate Mary Mary Jacobs. Were you nominating Ms. Nope. Eisen or were you just commenting? All right, just comment. So we have one nomination. Any other nominations? Hearing none. City Clerk, can we take the roll on nomination of Mary Jacobs? Commissioner Sachs. Um, no. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman. Yes. Commissioner Colodi. Yes. Mayor Owen. Y yes. But, but now I have pause. <laughs> you should. All right. I shouldn't have said that. Mary Jacobs has been nominated. Those terms expire June 22nd, 2019. It says in one place in 2022 on the other. So whatever the official record is, the city clerk will note in the minutes, I'm sure. Mr. Mayor, yes. may I make a quick comment? Sure. Uh, I feel remiss that we are not uh, entertaining nominations for the Utilities Commission. When do we when do we propose to have that happen? Commissioner Sachs, I currently have that agenda item scheduled for consideration by the City Commission on April 23rd. Thanks, John. Yes, sir. I will tell you that's that's an important one. I, I personally am okay with having more time to make sure we have a chance to talk to those folks and interview them and various different things. So, uh, Item C, Neighborhood Council, accept the voluntary resignation of current member John Hallisey and consider the appointment. So first is our motion to accept the resignation. Motion to accept. Second. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman? Yes. Commissioner Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Okay, the following citizens have decided their willingness to serve. Lisa Martin, Mary Jacobs, who I think is the same Mary Jacobs who just appointed to the other position. Uh, again, there may be some in the package we were given arriving at the meeting. Do we have any nominations to appoint an applicant to the Neighborhood Council? Nominate Lisa Martin. Any other nominations? If not, City Clerk, can we take a vote on the nomination of Lisa Martin? Vice Mayor Hartman? Yes. Commissioner Colodi? 
Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Congratulations, Lisa. Welcome back. I told Lisa, I saw her out the other day, I said I was about to have the police go by and do a wellness check. I hadn't seen her in a couple of meetings and <laughs> <laughs> make sure she was okay. So, dedicated citizen. Uh, all right. Congratulations. Uh, that term expires May 28, 2019. Next item up, Mayor and Commission reports. We'll begin with the Vice Mayor. Um. <coughs> Sorry. I attended the... Um, I can't even think now. <laughs> it's late. The Baptist Church celebration for their 133rd year over on Washington Street. Again, I think Commissioner Sachs and I attended last year. It was a, a, a very... Uh, inter I won't say entertaining, but it was a very informal and it was a very um, moving experience. Um, they had a lot of youth in the crowd, which was very encouraging to me. So I thank them for the work that they're doing over there. And uh, secondly, I want everybody to wish Wade a happy birthday. His birthday is tomorrow. Happy birthday, Wade. <laughs> That's all I have. Vice Mayor was going to sing for you, he said. So. Go ahead. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. He'll call you tomorrow. Commissioner McGurk. I have no comments, man. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Commissioner Sachs. Uh, Commissioner McGurk is kindly yielding his time. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much. I'll, I'll try to make it fast. Okay. Um, just to bring to your attention, I'm very concerned. Uh, I, I heard a rumor that the Utilities Commission is considering selling approximately 800 some odd acres of their watershed. It's a water recharge area. I don't know what class it is, but any watershed to me is important. Um, I might be willing to let that Williamson Road go through there, but I don't believe we should develop that land. It should be retained for our water quality, our potable water, and I just wish there was something that we could do to fend that sale off if it is uh, looming. Um, something hopefully good has happened. I had had contact from a district traffic operations engineer from FDOT, uh, Mr. Strohs, and he followed up on a previous conversation about the emergency traffic lights for our two fire stations that are on State Road 44. And he said that um, those two lights are not contingent upon any other development and that they could proceed on their own merits. So we don't have to consider uh, Wallace and Mission when we consider a traffic light for our headquarters, Station 50, and we don't have to consider the possible building of a Hyatt Hotel for Station 52 on Beachside. So I hope you please keep that in your minds. Uh, a, a letter hopefully will be coming forth to our city manager uh, for her consideration. And I, I would strongly suggest we, we upgrade our level of service and make sure our firefighters get there faster and safer. Um, I also spoke to the city manager about the parking citations fee. Uh, it was overheard that people can go to our lots they can gamble on either paying $20, which is the fee, or paying $25, which is the fine. And if they don't pay the fee, they gamble, hey, maybe I won't get a fine. So I wonder if we should raise those fines. Just something for your consideration. Um, please bear with me. Yes, something in addition uh, for staff to consider there are a lot of people fishing. Uh, fishing has been good. Uh, people fishing from landside, people fishing from the water. It was brought to my attention by one of the captains that there has been a, uh, a conflict between the two at our bridges. I'm hoping we can uh, not allow fishing from the bridge uh, on the North Causeway. People have actually had lead weights dropped into their boats. 
uh, fishermen on the bridge have been running from spot to spot because the best spots are, are very, it, very competitive. It, it's, it's combat fishing. Uh, so I, and I would, I would like to see the FWC get involved as well if we could engage them because you know I like to fish and I like to follow the rules and I don't like to get into conflicts with other fishermen. I go out of my way to get out of their way, but it seems we're having some big conflicts um, at the bridges. I, I, there is a pier there for people to fish, but they insist on fishing on the dangerous drawbridge. So if we could uh, pay some attention to that, that, that would be uh, very good. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Commissioner Colodi. I'm holding a community forum on April 5th between 4.30 and 6.30, Coronado Civic Center. It's for Zone 1. I really hope people from throughout the town come about. It's going to be, I hate to use the word informal, but I don't want to see a single person leave there without getting an answer from me on either a position I have or uh, any subject whatsoever, hopefully involving uh, New Smyrna. <laughs> I would love to see a large turnout. And I talk fast when I'm in a situation like that. Second thing is I attended the sales tax presentations. I was glad to see how many nice new roads they're gonna, they're gonna use to fund this money to bring all these people into town with absolutely no money being spent on getting them into our neighborhoods. I leave that to every resident to make their own decision on that. Special events. We had a wine walk this past weekend. I heard complaints about the wine walk, especially from my wife, because it took her 35 minutes to get from Publix to the North Causeway. We have to do something. I do not blame the merchants. They do their best. I do not blame our ordinances. I blame the people who attend, whether they're from this town or from out of this town. They park all over the place. They walk around in the streets. They disrespect our community. Unfortunately, they don't seem to want to police themselves. I've spoke with the uh, city manager who hopes to have an additional parking enforcer out at special events. And I'm not signaling out uh, Flagler Avenue because we have them all over the town. And I would like these same standards applied to all of them. One other thing I, I would like to see, I don't know if our budget would allow it. I don't know if our personnel that we have would allow it. But if you go back to uh, when we have this national, national problem in schools, with people coming in and causing harm. One of the big solutions is to have patrolmen in there, to have authorized people in there. I think that the way those things work is because when you see the presence of authority, you behave better. I would like to see physical presence of our police on Flagler Avenue and some of these other very large events. I don't expect them to arrest people I don't expect them to interfere with what's going on, but simply their presence there will set the state of mind maybe a little better for some of our visit visitors and our residents. One other thing on our appointments we made today, uh, as you pointed out the last time, Mr. Mayor, I don't like to see people coming in at the last minute with uh, applications that I have not had the time to review and to look at, I think that we should not consider people who file at the last minute or we postpone the appointment, one or the other, as we did last time. I think we should have done that this time. I'm done, thank you. Mr. Mayor, may I please? I, I always forget something, very brief, very brief, sir. Uh, uh, Commissioner Colodi and I attended the Neighborhood Council. I love the Neighborhood Council because they're very engaged. They're, they're the most intelligent people. We were so lucky to have them in the neighborhood council. But uh, one of the attendees, Christina March, 
uh, made a wonderful point. She said, we need to get out the word that our neighborhood council exists. And she said, why don't you get it, create a website or a, a I'm very bad with <laughs> these terminologies, a uh, email, a way to contact them. Newsletter. And yep. a news, a new, thank you, a newsletter and the times that they meet because I think they'll really be an <coughs> asset for our community. So uh, that was a great, uh, great help to us. And of course the council, you guys are awesome. Thank you. So if we could do that, go for maybe staff would go forward with uh, making them more well known. Thanks. Sorry. Thank you. So last last couple items, and I know staff's got a few more, so I'll be I'll be brief. Um, had the privilege of attending the um, I couldn't go to the service that vice mayor went to because I had uh, the privilege of going to the 250th uh, anniversary of the St. Paul Episcopal Church. And I uh, was very um, honored to be there. I mean, two, 200 and, 250 years. Um, you know, the, the, there's a church, the church in the Bible talks about the church at Smyrna. And I used to think it was talking about the one over in Greece, but now I think it was talking about St. Paul's Episcopal, uh, 250 years. So um, that was a new one for me. I've never been in an Episcopalian church. So there were times I was standing and I should have been sitting and times I was sitting and I should have been standing. But we worked through all of that. Um, and made it through and what an asset they are to the community. They do much good in the community. A um, couple of other things um, to my fellow commissioners comments on, on parking and special events and other things just to echo some of the comments I made earlier. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've heard that, that I've been accused of the, the parking crackdown, um, which I didn't know there was a crackdown and I certainly didn't initiate it. I don't have the power to do that by myself. Um, I have said, as I said at the last meeting, I would encourage us as a commission and us as staff to make sure if we're going to make changes, if we're going to modify how we do it, I think the only thing we owe everyone is that it doesn't just happen overnight in a vacuum. Um, you know, we, we can't pull the rug out from under people. I'm not saying we can't change things and make it better. I, I ran to try to make things better. Um, but I, I think it, it can't happen, you know, it shouldn't be a surprise. We have to get out in front. We have to communicate with people. Um, I don't like coming into meetings like this and hearing that the public hasn't been engaged. I don't like having other meetings um, on different items where uh, I, I learned that, you know, we haven't really talked to all the right players and, and, yet, and yet we're supposed to be making a decision. So um, I'd encourage everyone, um, if we're going to make changes, we have to over communicate these. And that's from top to bottom, starting with us and all the way down to the lowest level of staff. We have to over communicate with the citizens um, on these things. I said all along, I'm okay with, with raising standards. Um, I'm okay with raising standards when it comes to parking or special events or whatever it is, if, if we can find the right balance that will work. Um, businesses are used to operating in a regulatory environment, um, but you can't change that overnight. They're used to operating in a steady regulatory environment. So if we're going to change it, let's telegraph the position, make sure there's involvement, and then we, and then we move forward. So a um, couple of upcoming things. Um, oh, uh, one other thing, um, you were talking about a plan and it kind of ties all of this stuff. And I said it earlier, um, we've got a meeting coming up on this priorities to our, our commission's strategic priorities. I guess I'd just like to delineate having strategic priorities is not having a strategic plan. Priority says these are the 10 or 15 or whatever number of things that we care about. A strategic plan says here's where we want to be in the next 5, 10, 15 years. Here's the overarching things that are going to drive our decisions. And I would argue we need one that is overarching and that we can, um, that we can reference as these other things come forward, like parking in, uh, around Pettus or whatever it is that kind of addresses these items so we can, we can see that coming. And again, that'll help us telegraph the positions to citizens. We say, look, we've been talking about this for three years. It's been on the strategic plan, et cetera. So maybe it's there. I just haven't seen it, but I haven't seen it. So, uh, the order of the meeting, um, we've run this now for uh, a little while. Um, I am pleased with most of it. I, I will tell you, I have, um, maybe just if everyone can think about if there's any feedback we want to have, I'd rather change it if we want to make any other tweaks uh, before we get too far in. I, I have debated the merits of having this mayor and commission reports buried towards the very end. I feel like we're, we're a bit rushed uh, sometimes, but um, other than that, I like having staff be able to leave, except for poor Mr. Fields here. <laughs> 
I like that staff was able to get their consent agenda, agenda items cleared. I like that we hear from the public up front. So I like many elements of it, but that is something I think we should uh, we should think about. And Commissioner Colodi can say I told you so on that one. And lastly, there's a state of the city. This uh, the chamber is hosting uh, this week. I think it's Thursday. Uh, state of the city for uh, it's a com combined thing for the uh, the three cities. Um, I would still like to do something specific to New Smyrna as we unfold some of our bigger plans, but there will be something where I will be speaking at the uh, at a chamber meeting this Thursday. So for details, look on the on the chamber website. And that was all that I had. And Mr. Mayor, if you'll forgive me, I'm stuck with one, this. One I'm, last one time. last thing. All right. May I? Uh, I'm stuck with this forgetful mind, but it is most important that AOB. Uh, I'd like to get a second for a motion to ask staff to visit the changing of the city marina designation on the AOB site to city recreation or recreation. I think that would be a good start towards preserving this if we could get that towards planning staff and the planning board maybe come back to us. Uh, could I get a second on that motion? Anyone wish to make a second on that motion? A second for discussion, but I'm confused. Okay. Go ahead. What's your motion? The motion is to ask staff to come back with a recommendation. My request, it's difficult to put into a motion, but it would be, I can't make the motion for us to vote to change the designation from city marina to recreation without it going through the proper channels so the motion would be commissioner are you speaking in terms of a, an application to rezone from yes, sir. marina yes, to yeah. recreation yes. yeah i just want to I make, make asking, sure yes. for the motion. I think asking i think you're a motion to for the commission to bless to ask staff to come back and present that uh, rezoning from marina to yes Mr. whatever Mayor. you said parks yes to rec to recreation yeah recreation as our other parks are Okay. So it's a zoning issue, not a naming issue. Got Essentially yes. both. Yeah, no. I mean, it would change the designation and hopefully protect it in perpetuity. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, yeah, Eric? I just <laughs> don't know how we're, we're, I think we need to, this commission has never had any discussion on what the future of the AOB site is. I think that discussion should happen before a motion is made to rezone the property. He said the I, marina. He didn't say the AOB. I, I, I thought AOB he did say the, the AOB site. Oh. Yeah, the yeah. AOB site. From, from Mayor, City Marina to, yeah, Commissioner Colodi. Oh. The zone is commercial marine right oh. now. Okay. It's commercial marine, which allows, obviously, any number of uses. Okay. Just to clarify. Got it. Um, I, it nothing to do with our city marina. Got it. So we had a motion. We had a second. Um, my discussion point would be actually... Uh, agree with Commissioner McGurk on this one. I, I absolutely support what you're trying to do. I think I want to see it held in, in perpetuity um, as, as well. So I want to get there, but I think probably what I would support would be bringing that item back. And, and I thought we had this as, as part of a strategic priority. So maybe we can get the discussion in then. And if not, we'll get it on a, a, an agenda right after to bring it back for that to be an item where we give staff all the direction we need because I would like to also add to that some direction of what we do with the site. I mean, it's again, it's a little bit of a dump right now if you drive by it. And I'd like to see us, we can spend $300 and clean the place up a bit. So, um, so that, that's my comments on that particular motion. But we have a motion, we have a second. Any other discussion? I mean, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I don't, I'm not going to support that motion as it is, but I absolutely would support something that would be. Uh, to bring it back on an agenda item within the month of April, let's say, or to adjust at our strategic priorities. That sounds like a motion. <laughs> Do you want to amend your motion to that? I'll amend that. Yes. Do you amend your you. second? I need to bring it to bring it back to to bring this to your basically your suggestion. Bring this back to the commission. Of, the AOB side as a discussion topic at a future okay. agenda within the month of April. So what we had three or four sure. shots at the okay. board. Thank okay. You. Thank you. You had seconded you. I don't have a problem with that, but I... The month of I, April is a problem? Yeah, April's... Yeah. I mean, we're pretty 
full with April already, so I don't know. I think we were suggesting April the 9th. So yeah, I thought that. Uh, yeah, I thought we already had something on April the 9th, and it's our strategic priorities, right? That might be one of them. Or no, that's on the second as our strategic priorities. Second is you have two meetings. So the ninth, that's what I was told that it's kind of. I'll tell you what would. I'd love to see how far we get on maybe the second. And if we don't get to it on the second, well, we can bring it back up, um, you know, at for the on the ninth. I, I suspect we're a lot closer aligned than we I, I, That's think. what I'm saying. I think it'll be a, I, a pretty quick discussion. It's just kind of getting it all. I mean, it, last time we talked about it, strategic planning, we seem to all be in pretty much alignment. So, so you want to try on the second, and if not, to the ninth? Is that what you said? I'd say we, yeah, we try to talk about it on the second. If we run out of time, we, we make sure to talk about it on the ninth. Which I won't be here. Okay. So we'll make sure to talk about it on the second. Yes. Fair enough. I think we'll have time. Thank you. All right. So we had a motion and. I don't know if you amended your second or do we just want to let that die and just we've directed staff we'll talk about in the second. I mean, it's you're withdrawing the motion, Commissioner. What's that? Does the commissioner withdraw this That's, that's what I'm, I'm asking is do yeah. we do we want to withdraw it or it can die for lack of a second or we can formally vote to make sure to discuss it on the second. Let's, I'll make the motion that we formally vote on this, that we discuss it on the second. Okay. So I have a second or a second second city clerk all in favor say that would be nice right <laughs> commissioner Colodi I just feel it's premature so I'm going to vote no commissioner Sachs yes commissioner McGurk no vice mayor Hartman no mayor Owen Yes, I mean we're we're gonna discuss it on the second. That's only <laughs> yeah. it's, it's one of the top priorities. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, next item up was city manager's report. Uh, Assistant city manager filling I have in. The report before you. I'm not yep. gonna go over each one item, but there was one item in particular that I'd like to bring. Um, in your packet, you have a, an application and a resume and an acceptance letters from the, our uh, new finance director. His name is John McKinney. Uh, John is the current finance director at the city of Holly Hill. Uh, prior to that, he was the finance director in the city of Edgewater. Uh, in addition, uh, he was on our uh, committee for the audit selection. Uh, he holds uh, a master of business administration. Uh, he is very familiar with the city of New Smyrna Beach. Uh, we've known him for a long time, and I think he will be a good addition to our city. So uh, we would like to have a motion to uh, approve him joining our team. So move. Second. City Clerk. <clears throat> Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman. Yes. Commissioner Colodi. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Can make a comment? Sure. And it just so happens that Vice Mayor Hartman and I have to go to Holly Hill, Holly Hill this week, Thursday night for the league dinner after we post <laughs> their finance director. Is that what you're telling no, they're, me? They're okay. <laughs> uh, I think our city manager talked to their city manager. They're fine. So I'll be with you. So in case something happened, when, when we get there, the there's hospital. no seats for us. I, you know, I'm going to look at you and said I thought you said it was okay. <laughs> Are you coming? Yeah, I'll be there. All right. Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, unless, uh, unless you give me what you have right now. Um, do you have one other item on that? I think it was some discussion on that. May the workshop. The workshop is on the second. You yeah, the, the starts at four o'clock. No, the budget. The budget workshop. Oh, in uh, the city manager's for, report. For, uh, for John. Uh, yeah. Because of uh, John, I guess we're going to give him some time. So we would like to move the budget uh, discussion to May. Mayor. 
May 21st. May 21st. So, uh, so the senior manager is requested basically to give John time to get up to speed. We move the April 16th budget workshop to the 21st. Uh, stated here, it will not change or delay the 20, the, the budget process, but we'll give him time to jump in. He doesn't officially start until April 1st, if I recall, or somewhere around, right around the beginning of April. So, uh, two weeks is not a lot of time to, to jump in head first. So I know we have great staff that'll get him up to speed quickly. He's starting but on April 8th. April 8th. Okay. So it's not even a week. Yeah. 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 Any, uh, uh, any objections to moving that meeting? Hearing no objections, we'll we'll reschedule that meeting. Does that that doesn't impact any notices or we're we're okay no. on that? Okay. As long as Tammy fixes my calendar. <sighs> okay. City. Any other city manager report? Any questions from the commission on the city manager report? Hearing none. City attorney report. City clerk report. Sorry. Well, Mr. Mayor, um, the last regular meeting I attended, it was September. So I don't want to say since the last meeting, <laughs> I, I want to make clear that over the past month, my office has been contacted by the supervisor of elections, Lisa Lewis, with regard to the um, mail-in ballots uh, and voting process uh, upcoming in May. And um, she requested of our office uh, whether or not they could put a ballot box in the city hall lobby. And, uh, you know, there's certain things that have to take place. We must secure it at night. Um, a supervisor of elections representative will empty all ballots daily during a 20 day period, um, May 1 through 20. And, um, as a convenience to voters of New Smyrna Beach, if they'd rather just drop it off here, they can, or they can mail their ballots in. I just wanted to share that with you. The, the representative of the, um, of Lisa's office, I forget the title. Um, is that city staff or will that be a volunteer? Or who will that, who will that representative be that's emptying the ballots? It won't it, be us. It will be a subordinate of the supervisor of elections. Yes. I do not know. Well, we get but it most likely that would, not, would not be will city staff. It will come from the land. Get the ballots and yeah. take them back. We will, city staff, city commission, no one will have access to the ballot box other than the Department of Elections. That's that what is I correct. Want to be crystal clear for the record. Yes. Okay. Representatives of the clerk's office will move the box from the lobby to a locked room inside our office overnight. Okay. Got it. Any questions of the clerk's report? Johnny, it's a sealed metal box. Oh, yes, sir. No one has access to it. it highly unusual, but it's 945, so. There's a question. At the <laughs> last meeting with the county, Lisa said a, a, a city staff person would watch the box all day long. Is that going to happen? <laughs> so the comment from, from the audience, I guess we'll say at this point, was that uh, Lisa had said at one point that a city staff member would watch the box all day long. Is that going to happen? The city clerk's office will be responsible for observing the box. Where will it physically be placed? It will be in the city hall lobby. That lobby, the front lobby. Okay. So there'll be a, I mean, the, the person at the front desk in, in theory should have a sight line on it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Miss Wendy will have pure sight line on it, and when she has to move, she'll call us and we'll watch it. Okay. And this is the same way other cities are doing it, correct? As far as it's we know. It's never been done before, sir. I know, but the same way other cities and plan sure to do it for this election. I'm sure other cities have planned yeah. to, to do the same. Okay. Any other questions from the commission I should clarify <laughs> on the clerk's report? All right, if not, city attorney's report. Yes, um, one item. On March 4th, the city clerk's office received a request for accommodation from uh, Mr. Gomez out of Miami. He's a legally blind individual, and he requested um, our documents on our website uh, that they be made compatible with his screen reader. Uh, it's quite a um, large amount of documents he's requested, 
Um, it's the budget documents from 2015, 16, 17, and 18, and all commission agendas and backup materials for 2016, 2017, and 2018. Um, we have reached back out to him. We're going to, oh, Mr. Gomez is one of the serial litigants that we've heard about in the newspapers. He's filed lawsuits in over 350 cities. Um, so we're going to try to um, reach out to him and try to accommodate his request in, in some manner. So we're trying to deal with that. The second part of this is um, moving forward, uh, our office is working with uh, the individuals who upload items to the city website to teach them how to make them um, accessible to the legally blind. So there's a, in Adobe Acrobat in the reader program, you can open up a document and it runs a scan and it identifies issues and you have to physically enter um, its alt text and move things around in order to make the page compliant. Um, there are approximately 468 meetings dating back to early 2016. That is just in terms of city commission agendas. Um, there are other items on our city website that need to be made ADA compliant. So while moving forward, we're working on things that are posted will be compliant. We have an issue of all the items that are currently on there are not compliant. Um, so this our, our office is looking for a blessing to take down the old stuff while we can address this issue. Um, the, the sheer quantity is, is very difficult. It would take, if we hired one person solely dedicated to this one job, it would take them over a year to get all of those documents into compliance. Um, so, you know, moving forward will be everything being uploaded should be compliant, but we're looking for a, essentially a Band-Aid to take the old stuff down, and I'm looking for city commission um, blessing of that decision. We didn't want to do anything without... Yeah. Bringing it to your attention. I mean, and the irony is, and this is what we talked about, but in the, under the guise of, of providing access, the serial litigant is now causing us to actually be less transparent by opening us up to serious litigation if we don't take some step like this. And, and we're not alone. I, I've studied up on this issue. I, I mean, up and down the coast, every city is dealing with this. We're just, we were next in, in line. Um, luckily, we're ahead on the captioning thing, so we didn't get the same letter as everybody else got on that. But um, for clarity, those documents are absolutely still going to be available if someone walked in and wanted to see them. Right. Um, and we could, m maybe staff could give us some, we could prioritize some key documents and, and, and work to get those up as we had staff capacity. Um, you know, I don't know that every single commission meeting going back is is. You know all the all the material. I mean, there's thousands of pages of agenda items for one meeting. So I don't know that that's where we want to go. Again, that's we're not losing it. We're not destroying it. It's still going to be there. Um, but certainly some key items that are on the on the site. Maybe we could do. I'd love to see us use this as an opportunity to kind of assess our website overall and, and what we put out there, what we have, making sure we're consistent in what we make available. You know the whole the whole nine yards. So that's my. My two cents. Any other thoughts on this item? I, I have no objection, though, to removing it. I think if not, we, we open ourselves up to, to, to trouble, which is unfortunate. Uh, yes, as long as we don't destroy them and yeah. they're available somewhere else, I have no problem with them coming off the website. Any other comments on this item? I agree. I'm hearing no objections. Thank you. I, I mean, I think we all, in theory, object, but realize we have to do it <laughs> right right it's not yeah. ideal but we're just trying to address the situation very frustrating all right last item before adjournment if we can get this the one of the rudd children submitted it very great it says to my friends and we all have something so uh carrie i think you said what's up on this just for the record so <laughs> it's a drawing we got so oh. all right with that this meeting is adjourned One of the children, one of the red children brought, she, she brought it up before she left.